Gotta throw a party for my day ones They ain't in the studio, but they'll lay some Don't like the way I talk, say some We all in, this ain't just no game to us Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Kazmaier Stadium here in scenic Maumee, Ohio, where your Brian Golden Bears are visiting the 1-0 Maumee Panthers here in OH, OHSAA non-conference football. It's the Oberlin Turnbull countdown to kickoff. Oberlin Turnbull Funeral Home and Crematory, family-owned, family-focused. Well, Chris, we're here. We are here. You know, after a game last week that uh, was much closer than what the score showed, you know, a couple of bad plays on special teams, a drop pass that could have been a first and goal leaves the, the Bears 0-1. Absolutely, and you said it during your interview with Jim Funderburg this morning. Basically, it came down to four plays. Four plays, three of them on special teams. And, you know, one of the things you've got to do is win all three phases of the game. And so we held our own in two phases of the game against a really, really good band work team. Yeah, absolutely we did. Uh, we did a great job uh, doing that, and, uh, you know, you take away those four plays, and it is definitely a different game. It's definitely a different game. And here from Ami, broke a 34-game losing streak last week. There's a you, you look out on this side of the field, and it, there's a sea of purple out here. It almost looks like a Brian home game. Yeah, it's purple and gold on both sides. Purple and gold on both sides. At least we're wearing different color uniforms. That was not the case when these two teams played in baseball. It is. And, and you know, for, for those of us that are up here doing the, uh, the the broadcast, different color pants and different color jerseys really help because the helmets look almost identical. This one's going to be a good one. Um, like I told Jim this morning, this isn't your mama's mommy's Panthers. This may be your grandparents' mommy Panther team. Um there's a different attitude. There's a different feel around this program. They brought back Coach Evan Karchner, a 2012 graduate here, played at BG, and he has really come in, and he said the first thing he wanted to do was to make a cultural change. And you know what? Cultural change, they tend to, to pour over in to play on the field, and that's where we're at now is play on the field. This team is 1-0 coming into tonight with Brian coming in at 0-1, trying to even things up. It's been a pretty lopsided affair for the last few years. I think we're in for a good one tonight. You know what I found was really interesting was that we don't, um, we don't, we didn't play them until, until 2020. We didn't play them since 1975. But there is history between these two yeah, teams. Yeah, there, there's a history here. And tonight, this one's going to be a good one. Um, Brian's going to be receiving the opening kickoff. We're about a minute and 35 away from the opening kick. It's going to be a good one tonight. Let's get through some of our keys to the game, some of our reads coming in to tonight, and let's take a look at tonight's officials. Our officials tonight, brought to you by Tri-State Vision Center, has been serving the area since 1977. Contact us either at our Brian or Montpelier office. Tonight's officials, David Joseph, Troy Fowler, Court and Michael Sazaman and Jason Rush are our officials for tonight's game. Out on the field getting ready for this one to be kicked off. It's going to be a good one tonight. Taking a look at the Q96.5 pregame weather conditions, it's muggy. It's much better than it was yesterday, but it is still going to be warm and muggy here tonight. So we are looking forward to this one. This is one of those games that could very much be decided not by what happens here in the next 48 minutes, but what has happened over the last three or four days. One of the things that is an old saying, you can lead an athlete to water, but you can't make them drink. The two big players for Mommy went down with cramps last week, as did our two stars for Brian. We'll see how that goes tonight. Our national anthem tonight was brought to you by the Veteran Services of Williams County. Thank for their sponsorship. Balls lined up on the 40 far hash mark as Mommy kicking to Brian, moving some things up in the back end for the Golden Bears. Balls up in the air, end over end, taken, goes into the end zone. It's going to be a touchback. The Golden Bears will start first and 10. Let's look at the Brian 
offense here tonight. That kickoff, nobody won tonight. The kickoff sponsored by Brian Ford Lincoln. Register for the kickoff on the Brian Sports Facebook page. One lucky contestant each week. If the Golden Bears return their opening kickoff for a touchdown, $150 Brian Ford gift card. Brian Ford Lincoln, where good values mean a great deal. Well, there was no kickoff return today. No. So. Through the end zone, I saw him warming up, and he was off the snap, off the ground, off the hold. He was just a couple of feet short on 50-yard field goal attempts. Brian coming out. They are in their traditional shotgun. They've got two to the field side, one to the boundary, two backs in the backfield. Handoff is fake handoff. It's a read option around the right side. Kepler down the field, out over the 30, 35, where he's pushed out of bounds. Nice run by Kepler. I, I thought for sure that he handed the ball off to Harold, but it didn't, wasn't a handoff. It was a good hit. It was a good handoff. Everybody was faked. And he, and he just held the ball on his yep. hip for a couple of seconds. It was wonderful. And again, two backs, two receivers to the right side. Kepler takes a shotgun snap. This time, hands it off to Wolf up the middle. He's out over the 35, almost to the 40. It's going to be a gain of four. I think when you're looking at Brian, what they need to do, they absolutely need to do, is they need to control the pace of this game from the beginning. If we look to, to, and when we get to our keys to the game, one of the things that Mommy did last week, now it's Harold up the middle, first down yardage out over the 45 to the 46, where he's brought down. You know, in a 48-minute football game, you, you look to have 24 minutes of possession. Mommy had the ball for 31 minutes last week against Springfield, so that's what they're going to want to do tonight. Brian's going to play their own game. Ball in the far hash. Again, Wolf up the middle. He's got space, 45, tripped up by the ankles at the 46-yard line over in to Mommy territory. The main stop scoreboard, uh, just over 11 minutes to go in the first quarter here. First drive of the game for Brian. Moving second down, two to go. Ball on the Mommy 46. Again, Kepler up the middle. When he get to the 45 where he's going to meet a whole host of Panthers. Mommy figured that one out. They did. I think that holding the ball on the hip the first time worked. We know one of the things about this, looking at some of the highlights from last week, you got offenses that mirror each other. This isn't going to be something that these guys haven't seen in practice. Keeping the ball in that far hash. Harold up the middle, inside the 40, down to about the 38. Another Golden Bear first down. Clock rolling. 10.30 to go in the first quarter. Ball on the 39-yard line. First down, Golden Bears. Kepler behind center. Wolf and Harold behind him. Hand off to Wolf. Looking to go over the right side. Tries to bounce outside. Gets stopped and wrapped up. Nice defensive play that time by Liam Murphy, the 5'10", 208-pound senior. Murphy from just came in there and you know they were had nothing, nothing they weren't fooled at all with that one no nowhere to go this time Kepler's going to roll his first pass attempt rolls those in the flat complete there's, there's a, a flag, flag on the play complete to Langendurfer and he's dragging folks inside the 25 to the 23 interested to see what the penalty call is going to be it's weird where it was thrown. Ineligible downfield. Ineligible downfield. Down call. Line, lineman got too it's, far down or he didn't line up properly. It, it, it's, it's the problem when you make those rollouts and a play takes a while to develop is those linemen, you go off of a count in your head. That's going to move the Golden Bears back. Let's take a look while they're marking off this penalty and take a look at our sponsors and a huge shout out and thank you to Andres O'Neill and Lowe, the Bryan Athletic Boosters, Bryan Parks and Recreation, the Daniel Van Atta Agency, Fackler Monument, and Jason Deach Automotive Services. Penalty's gonna move the ball back right on the 45. The ball's on the far hash mark. Again, two receivers to the wide side, one to the boundary. Now they're gonna put Harold in motion to put two each way. Snap back to Kepler, looks, has time, dances in the pocket, moves to his right, scrambles back to his left. Now he's going to take off. A lot of pressure, dumps it in the middle. Once again, Langendurfer with a great catch at the 30, down to about the 28. That's going to be really close to another. They're giving it to him. 
Brian, the, first down. The person that you want to credit on that play is Wolf, because Wolf was spying the defender that was coming up to take care of Kepler, and Wolf able to shift him just enough to be a threat, and that's what happened there. And, and, and that's a tough pass. We, we talked about it last week. Roll into your left, trying to throw the ball for a righty. This time he rolls to his right, cuts it up inside. And again, another nice block by Wolf. Kepler's going to get about three on the play, I think, to put it at the 25. But once again, those mommy backers, they're running a 3-5 defense, and those five backers are all just, they have their assignments, and they're really sticking with it. A little bit different than the Montini teams we've seen in the past because there used to be a lot of blown assignments and things, but these backers are really on track tonight. When, when you got a coach who played linebacker at Bowling Green, I think he's probably taught him that. Time in the pocket. Look to set up a screen. Well read by Mommy. And we got a, a flag they're for block get a, in the back. There's going to be a block in the back or a blind side. That was a really good play that time by Pierce Simpson, 6'1", 236 pounder, as he started to attack and read the screen. Going to be a personal foul against the Golden Bears. That's going to back him up. And penalties so far killing the Golden Bears. Opposite of the start last week where Van Wert had about five penalties on their first drive. This time, Brian's moving backwards. Going to move the ball back to the 40, and it's going to make it second down and 22. Second and 22 for Brian on the main stop scoreboard. 8.20 and the clock rolling in the first quarter here from Kazmaier Stadium in Maumee. Wolf in motion. Kepler rolls to his left. Looks downfield, floats it downfield, caught once again, almost the same play. They've ran that play about three times now where Kepler rolls to his left and finds Langenderfer finds a nice spot in the zone. Nice soft spot run out of bound that time by Carson Grates, the 5'11", 163 pound junior. And number 60, Cade Spizak just pancaked his, his man on the line, helping that play along. That's a good one, that's a good one. Brian looking for the place to come in. They've got it back to a manageable third and 10. 8.09 to go on the main stop. Scoreboard, nothing, nothing. Brian Mami, the Golden Bears, on their opening drive of the game. Took the kickoff at the 25, have marched it down to the 28. And now we're going to get a timeout. A timeout on the field. Timeout, Brian will take one with him. You're listening to the Golden Bears Sports Network. at Northwest State. Over the past two years, we have awarded nearly $2 million in foundation scholarships. That's free money for college. Don't miss out. Apply today. Welcome back to Kazmaier Stadium. Brian driving third down, 10 to go. Ball on the 28 yard line. Ball now on the near hash. Trips to the field side, one to the boundary side. Read option. Nice stiff arm by. Couldn't get away. Had a nice stiff arm. Thought he would be able to break outside, but it was well read by Mommy. Kepler, they're going to say he lost a yard on the play is going to make it fourth down and 11, the ball on the 28. That was number 55, Liam Murphy, the Mike linebacker that came in and really cleaned that one up. He's had a really good opening drive. Fourth and 11, big one here. Pressure coming, Kepler in trouble, escapes. I don't think he's going to escape a second one. Big sack on the play all the way back to the 45. And that's going to be a turnover on down. Again, Liam Murphy on that sack. That was just amazing. He is, uh, he's the real deal. 5'10", 208 pound senior, and he just busts through the line. As we switch to the other side of the ball, when Brian goes on defense, one of the things that uh, I think is gonna be a consistency this year, this mommy offensive line is huge. Yep. You know, they've got a 299 pound tackle, a 260 pound tackle, 
And once again, we're outsized on the line from offense to defense by about 40 pounds a guy. Um, but like last week, what Brian needs to do, their line doesn't need to make incredible plays. They need to eat blocks and let that, that really good linebacker core, which is the heart of this team, do their thing. Hand off this time up the middle. It's going to be Cody Wolf on the carry for. Cody Wolf had a monster game last week. 14 carries, 113 yards, four catches for 41. He had a good ball game. He did. And, and again, like we were talking about, mirror teams. They're playing out of the shotgun, backs in the backfield, and their threats are their quarterback. Um, Chase Malucci had 100 yards passing, 77 running, and Wolf with 113 on the ground. Trips to the this side, nobody to the left. Nice hesitation move that time. Going to be enough for a Mombi first down as they push into Bryan territory. Going to be Wolf on the carry again. I think that was Tristan Dotson. Was that Dotson on the yeah, carry? Yeah, he came in on a sweep from his wide okay. receiver position. And once again, no huddle offenses on either side but a little different than, we're, we're used to these teams coming out and spreading teams around and going absolutely crazy throwing the ball. These are two teams that are gonna spread it and run it. Malachi in the backfield, sends, greats in motion. He's gonna keep it up the middle. He's deeper into Brian territory, inside the 40 to the 35, another first down from Ami. And a good quarterback run by Chase Malucci. The yes. senior stepped up and just took off. And Mommy's got a guy on the feet on the turf right now, already. trying to get a number there. I think it's I think 50, 58, 58. Ramsey Quinn. That's the 5'11", 299 pound senior. So while they're tending to him, we'll take a break for our sponsors. You're with Golden Bear Sports Network. Those who made donations to the cause, to the school board and administration, and everyone who played a role in this project. We just want to say, <laughs> thank you. Phase two of the capital improvement project includes field upgrades at Rec Park, a new softball field, and revitalization of soccer fields on the former Washington school property, and renewal of practice fields on the BCS campus. Let's finish the project and build champions. Go Bears! Coming back where they're still tending to Ramsey Quinn on the field. Let's get a catch up here with, oh, that was, no, it wasn't Quinn. It was number 52, Joe Millen, a 5'11", 211 pound senior. Let's get another read of our sponsors here. Huge thank yous tonight to new newcomer Schaefer, Spangler, and Brenninger, Northwest State Community College, Oberlin Turnbull Funeral Home and Crematory, Starks Plumbing and Heating, Veteran Services of Williams County, and the Williams County Fair. First down, 10 to go, Mommy. Ball on the Bryan 35 yard line. One in motion. Wolf up the left hand side, up to about the 30, going to be stacked up by. It's going to be on the tackle, Devin Egner and. I guess you're going to credit Egner with the tackle. Second down, seven. Ball on the 35. You've got two to the right, one to the left. Malucci in the background. Now they bring their uh, the receiver, Will Kubitz, in motion there to the right side. Now they're putting trips to the right, nobody to the left. Tight end goes to the left. Barely get the, the call off. Malucci's gonna take off over the left-hand side. Almost an old-fashioned naked boot, except it was a designed run. Absolutely, and what basically happens there is Mommy brings the guys all the way over to the right side, so Brian's backers will spy to that side. That'll leave the left side wide open. He also had Wolf in the backfield as an option to toss, but he just kept it and ran. Third down two, big third down play here early in this one. Just under five minutes to go in the first, no score. Has looked to be a little bit of confusion on the last couple plays from Ami as they're running people in and out. Tamalucci coming out of the, away from the coach. Seven seconds on the clock. I'm not sure they're going to get this one off. Are they going to have to take a timeout? Two, one, and they're going to take a timeout. It's our second timeout of the night. The first one from Ami with 434 
to go here in the first quarter. Why don't we stay with you and we'll try to catch up on some of the stuff that we didn't quite get to in our pregame show. Let's take a look at our Carlin Company keys to the game. The Carlin Company Realty and Auctioneers, your hometown real estate company for over 45 years, consistently remain number one in Williams County and the surrounding areas since 2007. Call us for all of your real estate needs. If we look at these the, the geese to the game. Let's look at Mommy first and they've got the ball right now. Run first. They haven't even attempted a pass yet. Been moving the ball down the field. They ran for over 240 yards last week. Focus. Last week, the, all the hype was on Brian with the stadium. This is for the the first win of the season. They were talked about giving them 24 hours to enjoy it. And then the third one is control the clock. They we're out. They've got a full house backfield. Now they're going to shift everybody out. Three to the right. Going to be a run to the right. Malik is going to get it, tuck it inside, going to get right about, I don't, one, one, one official gave it to him and one said no. And now the other one agrees. Now the other one agrees, so it's going to be a first down. <laughs> he looked about a yard short on the one official, but yeah. the, the near official came in and said. <laughs> Waved him off. White line. So it's going to be first and 10, 425 to go in the first quarter. No score here from Kazmaier Stadium with Mommy driving. First down 10 on the Bryan 25. Now, I don't know if this is something that they're going to do this year, but I feel like last year everybody wanted to round up the officials. They always they were giving a lot of first downs benefit of the doubt. I don't know if this is something new. Maybe. But we saw a lot of it last year. Again, one in the backfield. Going to hand it to Wolf this time over the right side again. Inside the 20. Met going to be stopped. Big hit by a bunch of the folks on the Bryan interior line. That's what I'm, they're giving them four on the play. Second down, six to go. 3.30 to go here in the first quarter. Mom, he's just been methodically marching it down the field, hasn't they? And, and they're, they're in no hurry. They don't have a problem running the clock down. It's what they did against Springfield last week to shorten the game down. Once again, Wolf cuts back up the middle. He's going to get about two. Met that time by Dominic Egner. And a whole host <laughs> of Brian. One of the things that we've seen with Brian the first two games is they swarm to the ball really well. Aaron Williams has been in on the last two plays. First pass, little pass in the flats, going to be caught. Looks like it's going to be really close to another first down, and they're going to give it to him once again. They say he got the line. A quick little stop route. First down, 10 to go. Ball on the near side of the field, just inside the near side hash. Clock running at 2.30. Ball is right on the 15-yard line. A fake, a pass. Tip and caught for a touchdown. Wow. Aiden Schellenberger had it in his hands, bounced up in the air. When the, when the ball was released, I thought that was going to be a pick six the other way. That, that was just unfortunate for the Golden Bears. It was very unfortunate on that play. Schellenberger had it in his hands. It popped up in the air and brought in by Maumee for the touchdown. Ready for the extra point. Here's a snap. The hold, the kick is up, and it is good. So a 2.16 to go here in the first quarter. The score is going to be... The Bombay Panthers 7, the Brian Golden Bears nothing. You're on the Brian Golden Bears Sports Network. The Brian Parks and Recreation Department would like to wish the Brian Golden Bears good luck in tonight's game. The Brian Parks and Rec offers a wide variety of classes for you during the entire year and an array of sporting events all year long. Check out what the Brian Parks and Recreations Department has going on at brianparksandrec.com or like them on Facebook. The Brian Parks and Rec hopes to see you in one of the many parks that Brian has to offer and enjoy the facilities. Questions about the classes or rental of one of their facilities, call 633-6030. Being a little bit late to get on the air tonight, we didn't give you a chance to give you the lineups, but they're sponsored by Yoder Mechanical and Custom Fabrications. 
as the Golden Bears come back on offense. They are going to be lining up as they have traditionally been lining up with Kepler behind center, Harold and Wolf to either side. Langenberger and Hahn and Dominic will be split out wide. And we'll give you the line as soon as we come back. Ball again on the far hash. Brian stayed on the far hash the entire first drive. Two minutes, 16 seconds to go in the first quarter. Mommy leading this one seven nothing. Big long boot once again is going to go through the end zone. Touchback, Golden Bears will start first and 10. Let's look at the, the line for the Golden Bears. You've got Brennan Egner, Devin Egner, Connor Hogan, Raymer Clemens, and Kane Spisak, who have been did a really good job of that opening drive, other than the, the, the one penalty that really thwarted the drive for Brian. I think if they were talking to people on the sidelines, something the Brian coaches said is, y'all need to know where 55 is. Yep. You gotta know where Murphy is on every play. He is their, their, their Mike linebacker in the center of that defense, and he is, all over the field. Well, the Bears moved the ball well the last time. They just got a turnover on downs and a couple penalties. A couple penalties penalty. Empty backfield this time. Kepler throws nice little bubble screen. Going to be enough for a first down. Ball is going to be complete to Carter Brown, the 5'10", 148-pound senior. Carter Brown did a nice job with the yards after the catch. That catch was made in the backfield. He was able to get the first down on that yardage. And and Connor Dominic absolutely blew up Wolf on the block. All, t all sorts of time back there. Kepler just looking around. Now it's going to take off and run. Makes one man miss. Tries to tiptoe down the sidelines. He's going to get about three on the play. That time number 45 came in for them. Liam Kennedy, the nose tackle, came in and made. He was trying to shoestring that, that sideline there. Just not able to get through because Kennedy said, not on my field. That was a... Uh, that, that was a coverage play. They only sent three, Kepler had all day, but there was just no way that anyone was gonna get open downfield. One back in the backfield, gonna be a design quarterback run, right up the middle, Kepler out over the 35 to the 40, gonna stretch, make it just short of a first down, gonna make it third down and a little bit less than one for a first. Yeah, they got the nose of the football right on the 40 yard line and the yard to gain is the 39, so. About a yard. Right, up, right you at one. Two, you got two plays to get it. Two plays to get it. I mean, I don't know if you punt here or not. It's in your own end zone, but that's just going to say they're going to get it right here. Clock running down to a minute 15. This has been a, when you got two teams that run the ball all the time, what a fast moving first quarter. And they are going to give the ball. It's going to be Harold out over the 40 to the 45. Another Golden Bear first down. Nice running by Sam Harold. What you get with Sam Harold was power running. Sam puts his head down and goes, and he's been a great job at back. It's when, and when you're a defensive back, if he gets to that, that opening line and he squares his shoulders, now here comes Wolf around the outside. He's got a hole out over the 50, over the 45, down to the 40, gonna be out of bounds at just about the 40 yard line. That was a nice 15 yard run on a, just a traditional student body right. Well, Damian Wolf does a nice job in that backfield. He likes to keep his feet dancing. He's a little bit more of a finesse back, whereas Sam's the bruiser. But he, he has good feet, and he's able to stay on his feet and make things happen. Every team needs thunder and lightning. It's going to be once again, Harold. He's going to come to the left this time. Follows his blocks. He's got a crease inside the 30 down to about the 26. And that'll be a first down Another. for the Golden Bears. And nice job running by the in behind the blockers that time. He used his blocks really well. You saw him, he just put his hand out on the hip of his lead blocker and just followed him into the hole. Again, first down 10, ball is gonna be officially B. Kepler keeps it this time. Gonna carry bodies down to about the 21. We got another Mommy Panther down, actually two of two them. Two of them down. 56 Jack Lake and then 55 Liam Murphy both up under their own power and let's see were they down enough that they have to come out making a couple swaps and that's once again coming off the field is 
number 52, Joe Millen, who was injured on their, their offensive drive. But that's going to bring us to the end of the quarter. What a fast-moving quarter with both teams that run the ball, keeping the clock moving at the end of one here at Kazmaier Stadium. Mommy 7, your Brian Golden Bears nothing. You're on the Golden Bears Sports Network. Why do so many people travel to Jason East Automotive Services in Edgerton when they want their vehicles repaired? Because Dave Brown and Sam Bailey have over 60 years of experience fixing the problems that other mechanics couldn't. They work on all makes and models, and they specialize on imports. Recently, they have expanded their service area by almost 50%, and they've hired Eston Knurk to their staff. So if you have a vehicle, foreign or domestic, that you want fixed right the first time, take it to Jason Deets Automotive Services on the east side of Edgerton. Discover tremendous scholarship opportunities at Northwest State. Over the past two years, we have awarded nearly $2 million in foundation scholarships. That's free money for college. Don't miss out. Apply today. To Kazmaier Stadium, just the start of the second quarter, give you a few scores that are coming in from around the area. Delton Fairview, no score. Patrick Henry over Wayne Trace, 14-0. Bellevue leading Wasion, 6-0. Edgerton, 18. Hilltop, 6. Woodmore and Pillier, no score. And Defiance is leading Wapak in the battle in the WBL side, 8-0. Liberty Center, 21. Napoleon, nothing. And St. Henry and Archbold, no score. A little bit of an update on your... NWAL and a few schools around Williams County. Again, the two in the backfield, two to the wide side, one to the short. Going to be a nice slant pass caught to Dominic. Going to be inside the 10 to the 12 yard line. And that brings us for the first time this season into the red zone. A red zone being sponsored by Stockman Lawn Service for lawn care, snow removal, fertilizer, and spraying. Call Stockman Lawn Service at 419-636-6572. That last play, uh, it was a nice recovery because that snap got dropped. It was really low. And nice job by Kepler to pick it up and still make the throw. It's, it's the thing with having a nice, experienced quarterback there. He doesn't get rattled. When things don't go exactly as planned, you know what? You just kind of regroup, do your thing. This time it's going to be a keeper around the outside. Kepler pulls it down. He's going to scamper in. His fourth running touchdown of the season. Nice play by Kepler that time. I think he was across the line of scrimmage when he did the, the fake. Let's check it out here on the replay. You couldn't see it on the replay. I think he did a pump fake at about the six-yard line. The defender jumped. He scampered around in for the score. 7-6. Nice Here's the other play. side of it. Here's the other end of it on the Welling Construction replay. There's that There's fake. Nice pump fake. Replays being sponsored by Welling Construction. Kick is up and it's good. We got us a tie ball game. Welling Construction is a third generation family owned general contractor. We specialize and pride ourselves in building quality custom homes, major renovation projects, and commercial work. Your vision, our expertise. Contact us at 419 636 3712. Let's just keep things right here if we can. I th think we should. Let's, let's just talk about that drive. Last week, Brian had a good drive, kicked off, and Van Wert twice, twice. ran it back for a touchdown. This time, Mommy scores. We answer with the drive. Now, the drive I want to see is how the Brian defense reacts here. W w two drives last week. A, they gave up the two kickoff returns for a touchdown. But w Van Wert had a 98-yard drive and an 89-yard drive. This is going to be the thing that... We talked about it in this morning on with Jim. One of the big keys for Brian today is going to be getting off the field on third down. Um, and the, the one nice thing about the pace of the game is with a, a, a smaller squad at Brian and a bunch of guys going both ways, there's going to be about 20 fewer plays this game than were run last week. Yep. You know, Van Wert was hurry, 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 hurry. And while Mami doesn't huddle, they're not in a hurry to snap the ball. No, they aren't. They let it run down to single digits. So 
And what do you do here? Do you kick this deep and trust your special teams, or do you have blue chip? They're they a nice line drive. They kick it away. Going to be fielded at the 10. Looks like this time Brian does a good job of staying in their lanes at a nice tackle on the play. That was a big tackle by Donnell Bush on that special teams. He came in and he made a big turn. He turned him from the side to get that tackle right there. One of the things we talked about on our drive over today, and one of the things I know that you talked to Coach Redhead about this week, was the discipline of kickoffs. And it's what happened last week is discipline got broken down. And it only takes one guy to not do their thing, and we end up seeing it brought back all the way. So a nice return, ball out to the 30, but at least we're not lining up for an extra point. Exactly. <laughs> Once again in the backfield for Mami, you've got Malucci and Wolf. Malucci's going to keep it, cuts it back across the field, spins out over the 35 to the 36. That one was led by another block there from Liam Murphy. We keep calling his name, but he has done a good job there on his right guard position. He just threw that block that allowed him to escape. He is, uh, he, he does a little bit of everything, doesn't he? He does. And he was one of the ones that was on the uh, the Black Swamp pre coaches preview show. And he, he talked a lot about just what it, it would be like to, for this school to find some wins. Nice crash that time. I'm going to believe it was Cody Schaefer that came in, made a nice hit, got drug forward. It's going to be third down, one to go. You talked about Cody Schaefer in your interview with Jim, and that's the kid that has done a great job this year and get taken advantage of the opportunities he has as a sophomore. And, and, and what he, he does is he lets Sam take a break on defense. He doesn't have to go all 80 plays um, all night. He comes in, moves from side to side really well. Fake handoff, it's gonna be Malucci back over the middle. He's gonna get enough for a first down out to the 43, 43 and a half. Almost a 44, first down, Mami. Fox just lines up behind the offensive line and puts his head down and goes. He's not doing anything special. He's taking advantage of what the Bryan defense is giving him and using his blockers. He is, and with only a couple of pass attempts, we kind of know they're running, and it's, it's almost, this is a modern version of three yards in a cloud of dust. Mm -hmm. We're going to follow our big guys. We're going to run it. Stop us. Twins to the short side. Now they bring one in motion. Going to be a fake. Malucci rolls out to his right. Looking downfield. Throws it up. Oh, oh almost intercepted. And again, it was Schellenberger. <laughs> that last, or not, sorry, Maddox Langender for that time. Yeah. But that, that could have been dangerous. It went off his hands and there was a receiver in the vicinity. I think Tristan Dodson was yeah. in front of that one. It, it, it's... It's always good to undercut a pass, but the coach is going to tell you, you better make sure you get it. That one could have been really bad. Well, if, that, if he had caught that pass, the, the offensive player, he had nobody in front of him to, to stop him. But had the Bears caught that one, that would have been a big momentum shift. Going to be a fake handoff. Once again, Malucci up the middle. He's got a crease in over the 50 to the 45, down to about the 44. And let's see if that changes Mommy's plans at all, knowing that the Bryan defense has gotten on two of the passes. Be first down, 10 to go. Ball is at the 44. On the Northwest Ohio main stop scoreboard, it's all tied up 7-7 here with nine minutes to go in the first half. In a first half that is just flying by. Lucci this time hands off to Wolf. Wolf cuts up out to the left, out over the inside the 40, down to about the 35. Going to be second down and one. Nice little, he's a slashing type of runner. I have to say that I think maybe Mommy's offensive line got away with one there on a hold. The Brian guy was in pursuit and he got dragged down. <laughs> Looked like from behind. I think the first time tonight I've seen either one of these teams huddle, a little sugar huddle there. H back to the right. Now there's going to be a little bit of motion, and we got a timeout. Timeout on the field taken by Mommy with 8.14 to go in the first half. It's Mommy 7, your Brian, Golden Bears 7 on the Golden Bears Sports Network. At Oberlin Turnbull Funeral Home and Crematory, 
We understand that family is at the heart of everything we do. Being family owned and family focused is not just a slogan for us, it's a way of life. We walk alongside you during life's most challenging moments, providing a guiding hand and a shoulder to lean on. With heartfelt care and attention to detail, we tailor each service to honor the life and the memories of your loved one. We treat you like family because your journey is our journey. Overland Turnbull Funeral Home and Crematory. Family owned, family Welcome back here to Casmeyer Stadium. 8.14 to go. Um, a surprise score okay. after last week. In the second quarter, Bath 21, Van Wert 7. Wow. Loading up, going deep, has a man. Hot touchdown. Wow. A little touch and go pass all the way down the left sideline. Carson Great runs under it. He Kansas. had a man in pursuit. Last week he had five receptions for minus five yards. It's the problem of getting lulled to sleep. Cody Wolf on to try the extra point. The snap, the hold is down, the kick is up, and it's good. And that's a quick strike score, 8.07 to go in the first half, 14-7, Mami. You're listening to the Golden Bear Sports Network. Here at the Williams County Veterans Service Office, our mission is plain and simple. We are here to serve our local Williams County veterans and their dependents. We are staffed with trained service officers who have the compassion and understanding to assist their fellow veterans in obtaining all federal and state benefits that they have earned. Additionally, we provide emergency financial assistance and transportation to VA medical centers. So if you're a veteran or a dependent of a veteran, stop in today and see how we can help you at the Williams County Veterans Service Office. Welcome back to Casmeyer Stadium. So for a team that runs the ball, as well as Mommy runs the ball, that's two touchdowns now off two passes. Well, what they've done is they're lulling the Golden Bears to sleep. It's run, 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 run. When everybody gets in run mode, then they chuck it down the field. And that one was a thing of beauty. That was beautiful. Chase Malucci is a starting pitcher on the Mommy uh, baseball team, and he was like he was throwing a strike it, down the field. That what it looked like. Little short run up on the kickoff for Wolf. Ball boom downfield. This one. Ooh, that barely. Into the end zone and out of the end zone again. Boy, that came really close to going out of bounds. It did. It did. He's got a leg on him, though. So let's give a run through the scoreboard as it comes up as Brian comes back up on the field. A little bit of surprise. Bath 21, Van Wert 7. Here it's 14 7. Defiance leading Wapak 16 3. PH 14, Wayne Trey 6, Tonora over Otsego 6 0, Bellevue over Wauseon 6 0, Delta's taking the lead over Fairview 7 0, Liberty Center 28, Napoleon nothing. Antwerp Eden no score. Edgerton 26, Hilltop 6. Snap back, little pass out in the flat, it's caught off a shoestring, going to be good for about five. Passes out to Langendurfer. Going back to the baseball analogy, that was almost a short hop right there. It was. He did a good job of catching that one. So let's see here. This is going to be key. How does Brian respond to being down in this one? Can't go Pulls it, fakes a handoff. Nice pass down the middle of the field. Once again, Kabbalander for out to the 48. Nice little play action slant. Absolutely, and you'll see this one on replay here. As he's coming through, he fakes the handoff to Sam Harold, then chucks it down. There were two defenders in the area, but Langendorfer did a good job of catching that in space on the Welling Construction replay. Here it is on another angle. Oh, actually, that's the that's live, a live play. And it's Kepler scooping down the left sideline. He's going to take it all the way. Touchdown, Golden Bears. I am. No flags on the, the field. He just kind of picked his way down the sideline. I hope we've got a, a replay of that one coming up because that was beautiful. 
Yeah, that one was too quick to catch because we were watching the other replay. But nice, quick response from Brian. You know, we're two games into the season, or a game and a half in the season. All five touchdowns have been kept to running the ball. Yeah. And that one was just, I don't know if that was a design to go down the sideline or if he was able to find some cuts and get down there. But, boy, that was, uh, it happened in a hurry. Brian, the kick up. Sneaks it in the right side of the goalpost, and it's good. 7-13 to go here at Kazmaier Stadium. Mommy, 14. Your Brian Golden Bears, 14, on the Golden Bear Sports Network. To the Brian Golden Bear fans, those who made donations to the cause, to the school board and administration, and everyone who played a role in this project, we just want to say... <laughs> Thank you! Phase two of the Capital Improvement Project includes field upgrades at Rec Park, a new softball field, and revitalization of soccer fields on the former Washington School property, and renewal of practice fields on the BCS campus. Let's finish the project and build champions. Go Welcome back. What a play that time by Chase Kepler on a nice scamper down the left-hand side to bring this one back tied. Here's going to be the, 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 the key right now, though. Got to stop him. The Golden Bear defense. <laughs> um, we haven't stopped them yet. You haven't. The, the good news is is that there's only been two possessions because it's a nice, drawn-out game. But defense needs to be able to get off the field. The offense shows that they can do what needs to be done. Defense just needs to get themselves off the field. Well, we've got 7-13 remaining here in the second quarter. We will have the Bryan High School marching band happening after the initial uh, – Mommy band will do our pregame or our halftime show and then we'll have the band. So stay tuned for that. Stay tuned for the Brian band. <coughs> Booted this one a high end over end kick. Going to be short taken at the 15. He's made it to the outside. Only one man to beat. Out to almost the 50 yard line. Nice return on the play by Tim Marshall, a 5'10, 151 pound senior. And number 11 for the Golden Bears, I think, was the guy that made the tackle. And I don't even have 11 on our roster. He's right there, though. You know who that is? I, that's our kicker. I don't know if that's Caden Oberlin wearing 11 and not 10. But that's who made the, the, the person that kicked off, made the tackle. The kicker. The kicker. Man, he's out there now playing defensive line. So I wonder if that's who that is. We need to get a... I need to get a number on that. Give me just a second there. He's uh, he's playing out on the, the defensive end in place of Jaden Dennis, who broke a hand that's going to be out for about three weeks. Pump fake. Malusha's going to take off out over the 50 into Brian territory. Going to be good for about three. Going to make it second down, seven to go. Yeah, there's no 11 on our roster anywhere. Maluche again back in the, the backfield. Wolf with him. No, no, no worries. Going to hand off to Wolf. He's got nowhere to go. Going to be third down and nowhere. Well, that's a good thing. That's, this is probably the longest yardage to go. The I, think, I right. think so. On a third and seven, yep. third and eight. Ball just they inside just Brian territory. Now remember what's happened on these plays. Run, run. You gotta look past so if you're the goal players, you gotta stay home. You gotta stay home. Snap. Malucci rolls to his right, floats it out into the flat, caught, but it's gonna be short. Have to say thanks to uh, Ryan Miller, our uh, our illustrious listener, watcher, who is telling me that eleven is Jacob Uran. Jacob Uran. I've got a, I've got he's, he's fifteen yeah, on our roster. He's a freshman, but he's he's wearing number eleven. Thank you, Ryan. Thank you for that, Ryan. I've got him as 15 on my on our official roster. So he is playing kicking and now playing right defensive end on the defense. I believe he was the kicker. He went out and got the tee. Fourth down, three to go. They're going for it. Malucci going to sneak up the middle. He doesn't get it. Nice play by the Golden Bear defense, and we're getting off the field. Sam Harold comes in from his linebacker spot, makes and wraps him up, brings him down. Actually, a loss on the play. Big play. Big play, and that's why Sam Harold is important to you on the defense. I know Coach Redhead with the limited numbers would love to give Sam a spell, 
on the defensive end so that he can play offense. But I tell you what, you see how important he is to the Golden Bears he on is. the defensive side there. He and is. It's good for them to get off the field. He, he read the play, made a stop. Now let's see what we can do right here. Three to the near side of the field. One going to be a fake to Harold. Kepler, once again, all sorts of room out. A gain of about 12-13 on the play down to the 45-yard line. I like that. The fake to Sam and then take it off down the field. Everybody's watching Sam. The film shows that Sam's the guy. What they forget about is Kepler. Yeah, they do. And that the, the middle of the field, it was like parting of the Red Sea. Kepler back to pass. Nice little bubble screen. Ball caught by Langendurfer again. Enough for another Golden Bear first down. And this is what the Golden Bears need to do. They, they stopped him on defense. Now the offense has to answer. They need first downs. They need good yardage. They need a score. They need the momentum. They need the momentum. Once again, that 3-3-5 defense from Ami. This time they're going to give it to Sam right up the middle. Runs into his own blocker, but he's going to get out to a, about the 26, 27 yard line. Kind of ran over Brendan Edgar. He did. We just ran right Brendan into the like, What happened there? <laughs> <laughs> you know, and those are one of the things for for those of us who watch on Saturday and Sunday. Watching a lineman get run into from behind is a little scary sometimes. Absolutely. Fake again all day for Kepler. Now the pressure comes in, breaks down. He's going to escape, get out. Going to be just short, I believe, of a first down. They're going to mark him at the twenty. We'll mark him back at the 27. It's going to be third and two. Yeah, they have it on the down marker as second down, but I don't think they have it's a third and two now. Now. Third. And you know what? I, I appreciate Kepler doing what he could there and getting a couple yards. Jace Kepler of a couple years ago might have tried to make something happen instead of just picking up a couple. And it's, it, it's good to be able to do that. And, and again, he had all sorts of time, but they dropped everybody into coverage, so there was no chance. Again, He's going to be first down, 10, 5, touchdown Golden Bears. Once again, a read option, and he is reading everything right tonight. Let's look at this on the Welling construction replay. He opens up, dash to the corner, and you're not going to catch him. And Chase Kepler has all of the Brian touchdowns. Every touchdown this, the year, this year. Every touchdown <laughs> this year has been Kepler running the ball. I'm not sure be nice to have to look down there at the mommy stat guys at halftime and see just how many yards Kepler's got. Kick sneaks its way through and it's good. And for the first time this year, we can go to a commercial break with Brian leading 21-14 on the Golden Bear Sports Network. At Oberlin Turnbull Funeral Home and Crematory, we understand that family is at the heart of everything we do. Being family owned and family focused is not just a slogan for us, it's a way of life. We walk alongside you during life's most challenging moments, providing a guiding hand and a shoulder to lean on. With heartfelt care and attention to detail, we tailor each service to honor the life and the memories of your loved one. We treat you like family because your journey is our journey. Oberlin Turnbull Funeral Home and Crematory, family owned, family focused. As we're coming back, getting ready for this kickoff with the Golden Bears leading Mommy 21-14, let's give a shout out to our sponsors, Andres O'Neill and Lowe, the Bryan Athletic Boosters, Brian Parks and Recreation, the Danielle Venata Agency, Fackler Monument, Jason D. Automotive Services, Newcomers, Schaefer, Spangler and Brenninger, Northwest State Community College, Oberlin Turnbull, Funeral Home and Crematory, Starks Plumbing and Heating, Veteran Services of Williams County, and the Williams County Fair. Jacob Uran is kicking number 11. Nice end over end kick. Going to be short again, taking it to 13. Out to the middle of the field. Heads up field this time. Brian kept their discipline, kept in their lanes. Nice return, 13, 14 yards, but Mommy's going to take over on the 31, first down. And Sam Harold made that tackle right there, but it was a nice job of everybody, as you said, staying home, staying in their lanes. And that's something that the Bears did not do against Van Wert. Well, and, and what we're starting to see is some of the players that don't normally play on special teams are playing special teams because Caden Brown turned him inside when he tried to make the cut to the outside. 326 to go in the first half in a fast moving first half. Lucci takes a snap, fakes the handoff, his own read option. Derek and I talked last week about the importance of setting the edge and that is exactly what Caden Brown did that time. Malucci wanted to bounce that ball outside, but the edge was set. 
Caden he, turned him back inside. He really hesitated there. Carter did a good job there of, of getting him. This Same thing here again. Wolf goes to the left, and what a hit that time. Once again, Caden Brown, who's asserting himself in this ball game. Going to give Cody Schaefer the... Schaefer got official credit for the tackle. Once again, Brown was everywhere. He's, he's really sniffing out where things are going. He is. He is. Kind of playing in that not quite a cornerback, not quite a linebacker, not quite a safety. Looks now back to pass on this one. Pass over the middle. Incomplete. Looking for a flag. No flag. If anything, I think they got tied up just with their feet. I, I, I think, think too. I think it was incidental contact. Yeah. But another big play by the Bryan defense to get off the field. With 2.23 to go, the way Bryan's been moving the ball, we got a nice shot at this one. And I've got to believe at this part of the field that Mommy's going to punt. Looks like they're sending Malucci back. Now, always the thing to worry about when you got your quarterback punting us is he going to take it and take off. But they've got some protection there, so I think this will be traditional. Looks like they're playing a regular defense. They're not going after the punter. The kick. Boomerang-style kick. Deep downfield. Big bounce. Langendorfer takes it at the 22. Cuts to his left. Weaving around. Out over the 25. The 30. The 35. The 40. 45. 50. 55 40 cuts it back inside finally brought down at the mommy 35 there's a flag sitting at the brian 40 though looks like that one's going to come back anytime you get a break like that you look down you, for laundry and, and it's right, right there. there 43 yard line on the far side but that was returned but i thought the punt was going to go out of bounds yep they're going block in the back and what i like that he did was what you know a, a person probably would have just caught it right there on the sideline, gone out of bounds, lived to start another day with a drive. He actually made something happen. I like the risks. And it was one of the rare chances we've, we've seen where he's been able to, to show his speed. It is going to be the block in the back. It's going to be marched off. So it was a lot of work for not a lot of gain. But it's nice to see the Bryan special teams deciding to play in one of the phases 2.02 to go here in the first half. Brian leading this one 21-14. Yeah. Ball's whistled ready for, for play. Kepler takes the snap. Again, a low one. Pulls it back out. This time is in trouble. Is going to go down in his sack. No, he didn't. Fly. Oh, finally he went down. He escaped. I thought he was going to be down early. Broke out of that one. That was a broken play from the beginning. The, the snap was short hopped. And by the time he picked it up, he had people all over him. What you do at that point is you cover the ball with both hands. Just and go just down. To, to fight another down. Back to pass this time looking. Has time again. Thinks about running. This time he's going to escape to the outside. They've got a spy on him. Tried to get it to Harold. Going to be just a little bit short. Yep. And I tell you what, a huge block in the backfield. I'm trying to get a number. I think it was 65 for the Golden Bears. Logan Carter, but that might not be right. Maybe in Connor Hogan. Yeah, 55. I think it's 55. Connor Hogan. But I, if you noticed, trying to find an answer for Jace Kepler, that time they had Liam Murphy spying. Yep. When wasn't going to rush him, just moving back and forth and mirroring him and doing it again. This time it's going to be well, going to be enough for. Back to the original line. Back to the line. original line of scrimmage, but that's going to bring up fourth down and a long way to go. Fourth and eight. Bears are going to talk about this one. I know Mommy called the Mommy's timeout to preserve the time. Lots of chance. Big punt here. Yeah, Big absolutely. special teams play. Th this is one where you want, your, you want to pin them back. You want your defense to be able to do their job. Because the one thing you don't want in this one is a score, them to take the opening kickoff and score, and suddenly... It's 28-21. Yep. Yep. Um, you want to get off the field here. Let's take the lead into halftime. Get a chance to regroup. It's not looked like it's been a... The, the heat doesn't look like it's been what we thought it, and was afraid it was going to be. You know, sitting here with the windows to the press box open, there's a nice breeze coming in, even though the flags aren't moving at all out there. 
it is just as calm as calm could be. So that is going to be your end back on to punt. Spending, sending two back for the Panthers. Tim Marshall and Carson Grates back deep. Ball setting at the 34-yard line. The snap. Boots away. Nice spiraling kick. Driving Mommy back. A big bounce. That was just about perfect. Boomed it over the head of the Mommy receivers. Down by Brian. A minute six to go. 71 yards to go for a Mommy score. Now the one thing that could come into play here, I was watching their place kicker warm up before the game and out of a snap and a hold, he was hitting from 45, um, was just missing from 50. So they've got a weapon. They do have a weapon and it's a, a different situation when you have a person that can kick. I tell you what, that punt was about as perfect as could be. As you said, it was driving the mommy runners back, but that bounce really gave them about an extra 10 yards. Yeah, if we could have got the hop to go the right way. Twins to each side, Belucci back, quarterback draw up the middle, out over the 30, 35, runs through a grass, gonna be brought down, gonna be enough for a mommy first down. Well, I was just gonna say is you gotta be careful and still just play your defense. Sam Harold made the tackle there, but not before he picked up 10. Carter Brown came in and finished it up. Lucci back to pass. Pressure coming this time. Goes to throw it away. All he can do is throw it away. Good pressure coming that time from Uran and Rainer Clemens. One of the big things here is if you look at the scoreboard, it's 21-14, which is important, but no timeouts left for the Panthers. So they've got to work the sideline now. They can't do much in the middle of the field. Second down, 10 to go. Snap back, he rolls to his left. Looks, doesn't get his shoulders turned, throws it over his receiver's head, intended for number four, Christian Dotson. Nice job there by Carter Brown in pursuit. You also had Langendurfer in there, so double coverage. You feel like if he had made the catch, there would have been enough guys to stop him there, but and again, it's that, that tough thing, and we've talked about it both weeks, is rolling to the left and for a right-hander and yep. trying to get those shoulders square. And that yep. time, he just couldn't get the shoulders square. Clock has stopped, 45 seconds to go. Mommy calling in the play, the play clock under 10. Have to get things moving now. Get to the line at five, four, three. They get the snap off, gonna run it. It's Going to come out to the side to Wolf. Wolf out to near midfield. Breaks out of a tackle. Is going to go out of bounds right at midfield. Looks like they're going to mark him short of the first down. The mommy sideline wants the first down, but he didn't get it. It's going to be fourth guy, and one. The initial was a was a uh, yard short. Fourth and one. 39 seconds to go in the first half. Mommy's lining up to go for it. Trying to get Brian to jump on a quick count. Something like that. They need be. to be disciplined. They need to wait until that ball moves. Wolf in the backfield with Malucci. You got an H back to the right. He's trying. They, they were signaling timeout, but they don't have any. Don't any timeouts Player left. on the field was signaling timeout. It's going to be a quarterback draw. Wrapped up. Brought down. No first down. Another good play by the Golden Bear defense. Twice a stop when Mommy was really driving. So good job there by the Golden Bears. And defensive stops are, are, are critical right now. I, I'm not sure if Damian Wolf was in the headset of the Mommy coaches, but he had that play sniffed he out really from the did. beginning snap. And I'll tell you what, the, the thing that was worrisome there was you had a player, I don't know if it was uh, Carson Grates that was trying to do it, but like somebody was signaling to his quarterback to call timeout. Yeah. Good thing Malucci didn't. Because again, the clock was under five and things were, were being having a struggle right there. Kepler and Harold in the backfield. Triplets to the right, one to the left on the wide side of the field. Kepler back to pass, throws a little short out to 
Langendorfer, and he, Langendorfer, he gets outside, going to be to the 34, enough for a Brian first down, 27 seconds to go, stop the clock. I Couldn't was, have designed anything any better. Absolutely not. I was wondering what the Bears were going to do. You know, the first thought is you got him on fourth down, you're going to do a, a big strike, big play, but you also don't want to turn over them on me scores on. So you got to do things, but also take control of the foot, care of the football. Fake to Harold. All time to throw. Lines up, throws it deep into the end zone. Going to be intercepted in the end zone. That one, I'm okay with the turnover. I'm okay there. with it. It's It was taking a shot. You're yep. going for it. But you threw it in double coverage, and that was a challenge. It, it, it's one of the tough things. They, they dropped into a three-deep coverage, I believe. Let's look at the replay here. Yeah, they dropped into a three-deep. A nice double move by Langendurfer, but the safety came over the top. Yep. Nice catch by our Welling Construction replay. Looks like they're going to take a knee and go into the locker room. That's probably the safest thing safest to do Safest right play here. to do right here. It is. Absolutely. It is. And no one's even going to pretend like we're taking another play. <laughs> Everyone going to go in, take a break, take another play. And that brings us to halftime. Halftime here from Kassmeyer Stadium in Maumee. Your Brian Golden Bears 21, the Maumee Panthers nothing. Let's play together. Brian, Ohio will have a new inclusive playground on the site of the former Lincoln Elementary School. An inclusive playground is a place for children and families of all physical, mental, and social abilities to learn, play, and grow together. We are currently raising funds with the goal of starting construction this fall. The Lincoln Park Inclusive Playground Project is an initiative of Bryan Parks and Recreation using a project fund at the Bryan Area Foundation. To learn more or make a donation, visit bryanareafoundation.org. Discover affordable transfer opportunities at Northwest State. Start here and save thousands on tuition. Our advising team will help you get your credits transferred. So don't wait another minute. Get started today. Every day thousands of kids start vaping. So if you want to talk to your kids, you got to get it trending. Uh, I was just trying to get your attention. I just asked me. Visit talkaboutvaping.org for tips on when and how to have the vape talk. Welcome back here to Kazmaier Stadium. The Mommy Band will be coming on the field. You just heard the Brian Band here on our halftime show. Let's look from, at some scores from around the area in the NWAL. Delta leading Fairview 10 to 8. Patrick Henry 28. Wayne Trey 6. Last square update I had on Liberty Center Napoleon was 21 0. Can't find any scores on the Ottawa Evergreen game yet. Hicksville defeating Swanton so far 20 to 6. Bellevue 14. Wasion 3. Archibald over St. Henry 7 0. And here in Mami, it's Brian 21. Mami 14. Good show by the Bryan defense in the second quarter, Chris. Absolutely. That is something that didn't show up very much. well against Van Wert. They were bend but don't break tonight, and they had two big fourth down stops. Big fourth down stops that, that changed the momentum in this one. You know, I was getting a little worried those first two drives that Mommy had, drove the ball down the field and scored, and it was the problem that the Bryan defense had last week. They just could not get off the field on third down. And tonight, started out slow, but the second quarter, this defense bowed its shoulders and said, here we are, we're here to play. And you always worry with a team that's small, you know, in the upper 30s, and they've got eight guys out right now. You always wonder how you're gonna do playing both ways. And I think tonight, Coach Redhead's done a good job of mixing guys in, like Sam Harold, who he knows can be a force, but then also using his subs. Guys like Cody Schaefer. Yes. As you need to, which means the defense is still rested as much as they can, but they're still effective. Right. It, it's keeping a little bit of an air of freshness, and you can't rotate everybody, but there's those key parts of that defense. You've got to be able to get them a breather just every couple series, and he did that really well. And, and again, like last week when Schaefer came in, he played really well. Yep. Played and really well. The other thing that we've seen tonight is much better play on the special teams end. Much better play on the special teams. It has been a, a really good job 
um, of discipline and staying in, in their lanes. It's been the one mistake on special teams was the, the block in the back. That was the only mistake I've seen on the special team side of things that took back a big return. Um, but it was one of those nothing hurt situations. But one of the fascinating things is is that when we look at this team at halftime and we look at the team so far this year, Brian's got six touchdowns on the season. <laughs> all six of them. I know where you're going here. All six of them by your quarterback, none of them through the air. All six rushing touchdowns for Kepler, who unofficially is at 114 yards already in the first half. They've just not had an answer to that read option. I tell you what, though, Sam Harold is on the bench right now or in the locker right now, going, "I need mine." Uh, yeah, wait, yeah. Wait till he when once you have a one-two punch like that. Yes. Yeah. W w once he heats up, um, and he, they've used him well as a decoy, and you've got two kids who have played together for a long time, who are both very gifted athletes and they're smart on the field, and the offensive coaching staff feels very comfortable putting the ball in Kepler's hand and almost every play is some sort of read option yep. um, whether it's a read option to a pass whether it's a read option to a run almost every play that they run is a read option and trusting your quarterback your senior quarterback to be able to say it's yours you make the call this is what I want you to read you make the call and tonight he's called it right just about every single time he really has and uh, you know it's just been it's just been really nice to see uh, I also like the play of Jacob Uram. He's, he's come, come in and played really well. He's, yes, he's he has. kicked off, he's punted, and he's also done a really nice job uh, playing a little bit of defense. And, uh, you know, that's that's pretty clutch, too, when you got a guy that can come in and spill because you got Jaden Dennis out with an injury for the next three to four weeks. you got to find the next man up. And as I said, you know, freshman Jacob Uram has come in and been that guy so far. You know, the thing is, though, uh, you know, three to four weeks without him, we got to see who else is going to come up. Eight guys out for the Golden Bears right now. Right. And then a short week of practice, uh, we got to talk to Coach a little bit. We weren't able to air that for you, but the, uh, the JV played on Monday night at home against Van Wert. So Monday's practice, you had just the guys that weren't JV. And remember, the team has 30-some players. Right. So it wasn't very many guys. And then Tuesday, you know, they had to rest the JV guys because they had a full game. Wednesday they had a great practice and then we got into the heat situation and so even with the heat Wednesday they had a good practice and coach said their energy was up and I think you've seen you're seeing the results on the field of how you the coaching staff and the team addressed the adversity from the loss against Van Wert. Exactly I think they, they did it well and I think that you know tonight coming into into this evening was one of the things that they were able to do after last week was they were able to we saw all the pomp and circumstances, all the hype last week with the dedication and with um, all of the all of the hullabaloo around the video board, which awesome job, my friend. Thank it you. was awesome. Um, and you know, the big surprise to everybody when you flashed the lights after a Brian touchdown that nobody knew was coming. <laughs> what an awesome thing. But there was a lot of hurry up and wait before that one. And tonight, this Bomb Me team broke a 34 game losing yeah, streak absolutely. last week. Um, and one of the things that their coaching staff was trying to make happen was you have 24 hours to celebrate, but it's hard because you, you listen to, well, you couldn't turn on or pick up a newspaper oh, in the Toledo area this week without hearing about this team. To walk into school and get a standing ovation. Um, and when you you walk into school in the first day and get a standing ovation, yeah, uh, it, it's hard not to it's hard not to ride that wave. Um, and they came out and responded well, but they found out that what's the old saying by Muhammad Ali? Everybody's got a plan when you step in the ring yep. until somebody punches you back. Yep. Um, and Brian took a couple blows, but then punched back, and I think did a really good job. And you know, it's not been that Mommy's been playing poorly. You know, no. we're not looking at a team that had a, had the big win. You know, had, broke that streak and then came here and laid an egg. Right. They have been playing hard, and they've had 
a couple of really good drives. It's just the Bryan defense has figured a couple of things out. And so you don't want to see anybody have that kind of situation where you've got a big hype and then you have a big letdown. You don't right. want to see that. You want to see a game that's competitive and, you know, you don't want to see a team just lay down. And you don't have that with Maumee. And, and They're playing hard. Th this is... I told Jim this, this morning on the air that this was not going to be one of those one-sided, lopsided no, affairs not. that we've seen for the last couple of years. My call this morning was 35-28, Brian. Well, if both teams come out and score two touchdowns in this one, I should have gone to Vegas, man. <laughs> Absolutely. So while we're here, while the mommy band is doing their things, why don't we take a minute to say thanks to our sponsors sure. who let all of this happen for us. One of the big things is WBNO, WQCT, great job. Jim brings us on in the morning. We get the games on of an evening. No one covers Williams County sports like 100.9 B-Rock and follow the Brian Golden Bears all season long on Q96.5. Listen on, lay, on air or online at WBNO, WQCT.com. Also, those who make this happen for us in and around Welling Construction, main stops of Northwest Ohio, the Red Zone sponsored by Stockman Lawn Service, the game officials by Tri-State Vision, for, um, Brian Ford Lincoln for our kickoff sponsor, and no joy tonight as they're kicking everything through yeah, the end zone, absolutely. but no joy, but it, it's great to have them sponsoring, and also our game sponsors, Andre Sunil and Lowe, Brian Athletic Boosters, Brian Parks and Rec, Danielle Van Atta Agency, Fackler Monument, Jason Deach Automotive, Newcomer Schaefer, Spangler and Brenninger, Northwest State Community College, Oberlin, Turnbull Funeral Home and Crematory, Starks Plumbing and Heating, Veteran Services of Williams County, and the Williams County Fair. A huge thank you to all of you for what you do to let this happen and bring the game back home to the folks in Bryan. It's been I, a, well, I have to give you who our, our contestant was. Our contestant for the, uh, the the thing, I gotta pull that up. I'll get that at the end of the break. Sounds for our good. Our Brian Ford uh, kickoff contest. So we're, we're a couple minutes to go before the kickoff to start the third quarter. So why don't we send it away and let those sponsors get a word in and we'll come back in, wrap up our halftime and get ready for second half action here from Kazmaier Stadium in Maumee, Ohio, where Brian leads Maumee at the half 21 to 14. Discover tremendous scholarship opportunities at Northwest State. Over the past two years, we have awarded nearly $2 million in foundation scholarships. That's free money for college. Don't miss out. Apply today. STEM is everywhere, like here, behind the scenes of The Walking Dead. STEM can create new worlds on and off the screen. The only limit is your imagination. Get inspired at SheCanSTEM.com. Welcome back here to Gasmeyer Stadium, where Brian leads Mommy 21 to 14. And our kickoff recipient was Brenda Allison. She was our, our contestant. We didn't get it on at the beginning. And the kickoff that Brian received to open the game went through the back of the end zone. And so we weren't able to get that one in. But you can register yourself. Just go to the Brian Sports Facebook page, facebook.com slash Brian Sports. Look down, scroll down until you get to the Brian Ford kickoff contest. You register there. If the Golden Bears return their opening kickoff for a touchdown, you could win a $150 Brian Ford gift card. It's a wonderful thing. Yep. And as we saw last week, kickoff returns are, are a thing. They are They're a, a real thing. They are a thing. So hopefully the uh, Golden Bears can get one here. Just they didn't get one today. Get one. Maybe next week at Fairview. Maybe yep. next week at Fairview. And th that's next week. We'll be back on the air. Um, again, somewhere around 6.40 for our pregame show if all of our technical stuff yep. gets, gets smoothed out. We're getting a little better every week. We are, we are. And the thing is, you know, last week when we were at home, we had all this stuff going on with everything, you know, happening. And then this week, anytime you go away, it's always challenging because you got to get out with the cell phone signal. You got to get some things figured out in your space. And so it's always challenging. We're going to get it, folks. We really are. We're, we're going to get it all together. But, you know, we're, we're here now. and it, It's... It's a good thing. We'll be with you next week from Fairview. And that's a, a rivalry with a lot of tradition. Absolutely. It's a it's a historical thing. They didn't play for so many years because of some of the off the field activities that involved totem poles and, and things like that. You know, but you know, the last couple of years Fairview has had a really tough season. Two different coaches, you know, in the last year, two years. Doug Rakes is back now at Fairview, playing a young team. 
you know, it's going to be challenging for them. But, you know, I don't like the throw the records out the window kind of no, attitude. I, but, but at the same time, I mean, these guys go to church together. They see each other. They're, they're what, like nine miles apart. Mm -hmm. So they know each other. And there's a little bit of bragging rights. If Fairview beats Brian, that's bragging rights for a whole year. And, and for where Fairview is right now in the GMC and yep. where their football program is, a win against Brian is their Super Bowl. Yep. It is flat out their Super Bowl. And so it, it's the thing that, that, that we're seeing this year on Brian's schedule. I At the beginning of the season, I looked at their schedule and went, this team has every possibility of going 7-3. and three. They've got every possibility of going three and seven. Yep. I mean, that's the reality of it is when you look down that schedule and even the games that you think, oh, chalk that up for a win. Well, you know, you looked at the schedule and saw them on me on a 34 game losing streak and you're like, oh, that's in the bag. It's 21-14 and we didn't take the lead until there were like eight minutes to go in the half. And they get the kickoff. And they so get the kickoff. This could um, be 21-21 really quickly. And then, then once you're getting the, the NWOAL schedule, it's going to be just go 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 every single week but we're wrapping up our halftime here from Casmeyer Stadium Brian 21 mommy 14 again Jace Kepler 114 yards on the ground probably close to another hundred on through the air so far three touchdowns on the ground it's been the Brian offense that's the Bryant offense has garnered the headlines, but for those of us up here in the booth after watching last week, it's that Bryant defense being able to bow their necks on those third and short and fourth and short and get off the field that has been the difference in this game because Mobby's shown they can run the ball. And Malucci on that one touchdown pass, he showed he can throw the ball. This is not a team to take lightly. Bears have to be really careful about the first play after the kickoff. If first, I'm on me, I'm dialing something up big time down the field. Yeah. The, the first quarter, they had the crowd behind them, all the hype. It got really quiet when Brian took the lead and made those couple stops. So I think I'm with you. I'm, I'm dialing something up, a play action, a something to try to bring this crowd back into it. As, you know, as we talked about, they got a standing ovation walking into school on Monday. Mm -hmm. The whole community came out to support them. You want to get that crowd behind you. Your end's kick runs up and over in, taken at the eight. Out over the 10 to the 20. Wrapped up and brought down. Nice play down there. Once again, Bush on the tackle. Danielle Bush had a two mommy guys there blocking him. He was able to fight through that and just take the uh, make the tackle. I'm not. He didn't even get out to the 20. He's down on the 19 and a half yard line. That now that is special teams play the way it's supposed to. Be. Absolutely. And to fight through the two blocks that were being put on Bush, one on either side, he just fought his way through it and still able to make the tackle. H back out to the left, one ride to the left. Now they're bringing two in motion to the near side of the field. Going to be a quarterback read handoff inside that time. Handoff went to Keyshawn Midcalf. He had seven carries for 37 yards last year, a little misdirection. And that play call really surprises me. I really thought they'd come out with a home run ball to start things off. Well, they did try a little bit, bit of misdirection with an inside handoff there. And when I first saw it, I thought that um, Malucci was going to pull it down and take off. Second down. Seven to go. Hand off this time to Wolf. Wolf out over the 30, 35. Spun down at the 37 yard line. Langendurfer on the tackle. Nice run to the short side of the field, followed behind those big offensive linemen. Twins out to the field side. Tied in and H back to the boundary side. Now they're sending their H back in motion. Lucci takes a snap. 
Fakes hands off to Wolf again. This time Wolf met, dragged down, spinning, pulling a couple Bryan players with him. He still picked up a few yards. Out over the 40 to the 42. Looks like it was Raider Clemens at the bottom of the pile for the Golden Bears. Yeah, he made that initial hit, and then a couple other guys came in to clean it up. We saw the Welling construction replay there. And again, this is a very patient mommy team. They don't break the huddle until there's 14, 15 seconds to go on the clock in no hurry to get the playoff. Once again, Wolf up the middle, this time wrapped up by the center of that Golden Bear line. I think Sam Harrell Sam came was in there. That. Yeah. Here, we can see it on replay. I think Sam just came right in there. Yep, Sam Harold had that initial tackle, and then Rainer Clemens came in to clean it up. Thought I saw a single digit there. Nice single digit running in there. Now, again, this is where it gets key for Brian. Third and six. 9.30 left here in the third quarter. Pulls it in. Pulls it out. Malucci scrambling in trouble. Gets out of bounds. And it's going to be, that's going to go down as a sack. He was forced out behind the line. Yeah, he was. And we can see it here on the Welling Construction replay. There were three Golden Bears in pursuit. Well, two Golden Bears in pursuit. And Uran was one of them. I didn't see. Was it Clemens the other I one? I think that Clemens came may in? have been the other one. Big series right there for the Golden Bear Absolutely. defense. Because you give up a TD there, it's 21 all. Now what the Bears need to do is after this, they need a drive and a score. A nice drive, a nice sustained drive to get up some clock. Bellucci's punt. Going to be taken at the 20 by Langendurfer. Out to his right, across the numbers, 30. Nice shoestring tackle. He had a wall. He did, that was number five that came in and made that tackle. Looking at their roster. Is that Crawford? Yes. Bryson Bonds, Bonds Crawford. 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 Nice shoestring tackle on that play because the wall, the, the seal had happened on the far yeah. side of the field. Both twins in the backfield once again with Kepler. Two to the right, two to the left, one to the right. A little hard count. Haven't seen a hard count out of Brian trying to draw a cheap five yards. Puts it into the belly of I believe that was Sam. Yeah. Harold with the ball out over the 35 to the 37 yard line. This is the kind of drive you need to have as you'll see it here on the rolling construction replay. Just little chunks, five yards at a time. Keep that clock rolling, get positive yards, get first downs, get touchdowns. That's it, just keep, keep the ball moving, keep the clock moving. Only one, the two in the backfield. This time it's gonna be Wolf. He's gonna get out of the right hand side. Tries to turn the quarter, cuts it back up field. Nice. Put his foot in the ground, brought it back inside, going to be close to a Golden Bear first down. I think he's going to be about a half a yard shy. And again, the official rounds up to the big line. <laughs> he goes to the big line, so it's going to be actually a whole yard shy. Third down, one to go. We can see it on replay here. He, he stretched past the 40, but they're going to say his progress was stopped right at the 40. Big up the middle. It's Sam Harold into the secondary. 40, 30, 20. Run out of bounds at the 15 yard line. You said Sam was in the locker room chomping at the bit to get his. Nice run that time. Chased down from behind by number one, Tim Marshall. Hand it to him again. No flags on the play too, which is something you always look at when a big break like that. Nice big run for the Golden Bears to move the ball down into the red zone. Sponsored by Stockman Lawn Service. Nowhere to go on that play. Wolf got blasted backwards. Let's see if they give him forward progress to the line of scrimmage. But they, they were not they were not fooled. Not at all. Say. Not at all. So we're in the red zone, the Stockman Lawn Service red zone for lawn care, snow removal, fertilizer, and spraying. Call Stockman Lawn Service at 419-636-6572. On in motion to the right, and we got a procedure penalty against Brian. This is something that the Bears can't afford to do right here. They can't afford to kill drives with penalties. We saw it a lot last year. We saw it in the Van Wert game a little bit. Got to take care of the football. Got to do what you need to do. Especially when you're way deep in that plus yardage. Yep. You don't want to shoot yourself in the foot. You've now taken yourself out of the red zone. We're going to say they're still here. 
but you've taken yourself out by a yard now. Clock running under 7.30 now to go here in the third quarter. Once again, Hahn in motion, comes to the left this time, two to the wide side. Going to be once again, Wolfer over the right side. He's got a crease, he's got a seal. Touchdown, Golden Bears! There's the signal. He's nice in. Job nice there run. Him. He ran behind Sam Harold. Sam Harold threw a block right there that helped him to get free, and, and he nice, was able to scamper into the end zone. Nice Good pursuit by Mommy. Yeah, nice block downfield by Dominic too. Big stop, big response. 27-14. Brian leading as we come to the extra point. This is Caden Oberlin to attempt the point after. Up and good. Perfect on the year, and we just had a break in tradition, a touchdown scored by somebody other than Jace Kepler. Absolutely. And, and here for Mommy, your Brian Golden Bears lead Mommy 28 to 14 on the Golden Bears Sports Network. Why do so many people travel to Jason East Automotive Services in Edgerton when they want their vehicles repaired? Because Dave Brown and Sam Bailey have over 60 years of experience fixing the problems that other mechanics couldn't. They work on all makes and models, and they specialize on imports. Recently, they have expanded their service area by almost 50%, and they've hired Eston Knurk to their staff. So if you have a vehicle, foreign or domestic, that you want fixed right the first time, take it to Jason Deets Automotive Services on the east side of Edgerton. Welcome back here to Casbyer Stadium, where your Brian Golden Bears are leading the Mommy Panthers 28-14. Nice stop by Brian that time. Nice response. Good drive down the field, kept it on the ground. Big yardage um, eaten up by Harold. Finished off by Wolf with a nice sweep around the right-hand side. Thunder and lightning. Yeah, and you didn't let the penalty cause you a problem. Penalty took you out of the red zone by a yard, but you stepped up, and there you go. Nice nice play, nice response coming out of halftime by the Golden Bears. You ran up to kick off again. Again, a nice kick. They're kicking to the same side. Ball taken into the five, nice deep kick. Once again, hemmed in, Bush down there, leading a whole swarm of Golden Bears. I tell you what, we made, we had some problems with the uh, kicking last week as far as the kickoff coverage, but Donnell Bush, the senior, 5'9", 152 pounds, he's been all over you, the field tonight. You looked at that, you had Carter Brown, you had um, Connor Hogan, you had Bush down there, you had Schellenberger down there, I, I think they heard Coach this week when he yes. was talking to him about uh, the lack of precision on special teams play. I'm not sure that had been the word he used, but... Well, one of the things he talked about in his pregame with me was that, you know, he took over special teams from Coach Jacob Skirt. He said it wasn't a coaching issue. It was a kid issue, the kid's issue. But he wanted to make sure that that was fixed. And, you know, there are sometimes when the head coach speaks, people listen. Yep. Once again... Malucci hands off to Wolf on the inside, met by a host of Golden Bears. Let's see who brings him down. I believe that's a 75. Aaron Williams on the stop. Going to be a gain of about three. Yeah, Second down, did seven to go. There. He did. You know, it's nice to see because we talked about early in the game that the job of this defensive line was going to be to eat up blocks. Um, and they're playing really well. They're making some stops, nice plays. Little inside pitch this time to Carson Greats around the outside, met by Cody Schaefer and brought down. Nice little shovel pass. Gonna bring up a third down again. But still, even though he got the corner here, the Bears able to seal it and not let him get downfield too much. Good job there by Schaefer on the Welling Construction replay. And, and here is the first thing. I talked about it with Jim this morning that it's been really hot. Yep. It's been really humid and we had a couple players for us go down with cramps last week and a couple players with them go down with cramps last week. And this is our first cramp of the night. And you know, there's the old saying, you can lead an athlete to water, but you can't make them drink. And a couple of hits of Gatorade at lunch today and one before the game wasn't going to be enough. So while they're tending to their down player, we'll take a break on the Golden Bears Sports Network. Your on the Golden Bears is a tradition that brings us all together. Just like the sports we love, another tradition has stood the test of time. Oberlin Turnbull Funeral Home and Crematory, since 1922, we've been part of the community 
supporting you in the moments of celebration and loss. Just like a team, we understand the value of traditions and the love that binds us together. So whether it's cheering for a win or celebrating a life well lived, remember we are here for you. Oberlin Turnbull, Funeral Home and Crematory, Family. Welcome back. You're taking a look at the main stop scoreboard. Brian, 28. Mommy, 14. 6.29 to go in the third quarter. Mommy's going to have the ball third down at about three to go. And that's great who's hobbling off. We kind of, you know, we, we poo-poo folks who, who, who have cramps. <laughs> and you know what? Unless you've been out there on the field and have your calf just totally stop working, you don't know what it's like. It's a miserable thing. You know, I still remember when I was young listening to, to injury reports and have an NFL player missing the game because of back spasms. It wasn't until I had a back spasm as an adult <laughs> that I went, you're right. whoa. Yeah, he's moving slow. Looks like it's just a cramp. And those are painful. Those are miserably painful. They are. And even with the cool breeze that, that's blowing here tonight, it's still, but you don't get caught up on hydration tonight. You have to do it starting at the beginning of the week. Belushi's going to roll, looking to pass. No, he's going to run, tries to turn the corner. Going to get enough, I believe, for a first down. Shoved out of bounds at the 35 will be enough for a first down. Great block there by Zach Stam coming in. You can see it on the Welling Construction replay. He just shoves Rainer Clemens out of the way. And our replay is being sponsored by Welling Construction, a third generation family owned general contractor. We specialize and pride ourselves in building quality custom homes, renovation projects, and commercial work. Your vision and expertise. Contact us at 419 636 37 12. I knew I had time to read the liner because they take forever. They do. They do. They, they, not a team that's in a hurry. Fakes the pass, bubble screen out to the left. Complete to Marshall. Marshall down the sideline, makes one man miss. Kepler drives him out of bounds at the 40. Here's the replay on this one. I don't know what happened there. Marshall got, caught it in open space, and it was just well blocked right on the sideline there. And he, he had a kind of a stutter step. Nice job there by Kepler to catch up to it him. It was, it was. The block was... There were two really good blocks out in front of him. Rolling to his right, looks to run. Looking to cut back, pursuit from the backside. Shifts his hips, hit hard from behind. Lucky to hold on to the ball on that one. Nice play by Williams. Never given up on the play, tracking down Malucci from the back. I tell you what, he was carrying that ball kind of loosey He was a little loosey, right loosey yeah. You got to be careful of that. You, you got to protect that ball. I was a little surprised that uh, that one didn't come out. Especially with the power of the hit from Williams. Yeah. Going to run the swing again. A oh, red well. Nice play out there. Carter Dominic. Carter Dominic. What a play. I think they saw that one in the film room. Well, Jacob Moran came in and kind of caused a little bit of havoc, but then Carter Dominic laid down the boom. That was a nice play. Makes it third down, 10 to go. Ball on the 43. On your main stop scoreboard, 28-14, Brian. Clock running, 5-10 to go here in the third quarter. Fast-moving ball game here tonight. But you got a lot of runs, and you got teams that aren't really in a hurry. Third down 10, big play here for the Golden Bear defense. Try to get off the field on this one. Fakes the handoff, Belucci is going to keep it. Scampers around, pursuit, trying to get to the corner. Doesn't get to the corner, nice play. Quarterback on quarterback violence right there. Yeah. <laughs> Jace Kepler came in here, as you see on the Welling Construction replay, breaks a couple tackles. There were two Bears that could have got him in the backfield, couldn't, but then Kepler came in and took him down by the shoulder pads. And we've got a person on the sidelines. Is that like Kepler that? Is down, it looks like just a cramp. Nope, nope, that's Langendurfer. Yep. Looks like another cramp. Boy, there were two, I, Krista, can you run that replay again? Is it possible to run that again? If you look right here, the Bears had two guys right there that had them. They <laughs> put hands on them. And Kepler, or Jace again had to come in and do that. And you saw right there as Langendurfer went down. I don't know if a, the mommy player, when he got tackled, ran into his leg or he just know. pulled up there. But, you know, even to get that play off and happen there with a, two missed tackles, that's something that is 
pretty amazing. And, and a great work by Krista and our camera crew to catch that. You could literally watch his hips shift. Yep. And it was Jason and, I believe, Schaefer that both dove at his ankles. And he was there one minute and gone the next. And that here's where you get, again, I said this before earlier in the broadcast, that you want to get your guys out and get rest. Jace Kepler's playing both ways. You want to get him some rest, but boy, does that senior with lots of experience give you something on the defense that maybe an underclassman's not going to be able to replicate. That's just it. Yeah, it, it looks like a, uh, a cramp out there for Maddox as he's slowly walking off the field. But the loss to Brian is there's your kick return game. Yep. You know, he's also caught about every pass tonight, too. I'm not sure who else Brian threw the ball to, but I know that Maddox was Chase's favorite target in the first half. He's walking off slowly with our trainer, Alyssa. And, uh, you know, great job there again. And he's going down again. That hurts. Ooh. And there's just, and the thing is, is there's nothing you can do this nope. time of the game is just tape well, it up. Coach said they were hydrating starting Monday. So you think, yeah. but it was hot Wednesday and Thursday. Hot Wednesday it and Thursday. Awful. And again, you know, you, you got a bunch of guys that are playing both ways. Yep. And you got Maddox who's back there returning kicks and punts as well. So he's, and he's receiving. Yep. So, you know, he's running 20, 30 yards. Fourth down, nobody back for the Golden Bears to receive the punt. They don't think he's, they gonna don't think he's gonna punt it. Nope. Now, Kepler's gonna drift back inside the 20. Nice boot. Calling for the fair catch, gonna take it at the six where Brian will start first down, 10 to go, with four and a half to go in the third quarter. You're listening and watching the Golden Bear Sports Network. Discover tremendous scholarship opportunities at Northwest State. Over the past two years, we have awarded nearly $2 million in foundation scholarships. That's free money for college. Don't miss out, apply today. Every day, thousands of kids start vaping. So if you want to talk to your kids, you got to get it trending. Uh, I was just trying to get your attention. She just asked me. Visit talkaboutvaping.org for tips on when and how to have the vape talk. Welcome back here to Kazmaier Stadium. Brian starting the ball first and 10 on their own seven yard line. Hopping, skipping, jumping out over the 10. That is going to be Sam Harold. Sam Harold. Take a look at the, the main stop scoreboard. Northwest Ohio main stop open when you need them. You're always near a main stop. Don't forget, Thursday, Thursday, every Thursday. 28-14, Golden Bears, four minutes to go in the third quarter. And what's been a really good ball game so far from both teams. Mommy defense wants to step it up now deep in the end zone. Once again, they're sending well, our cameraman got right hand side. <laughs> cameraman got fooled there thinking that was a pass. The mommy defense didn't. Going to bring up a third down and about four. This is a spot in, in the game and in the field where, you know what? You, you want to grind out first downs. You want to get things. The one thing you don't want to do is turn the ball over. Yep. You want to make them work for every yard they get. Wolf and Harold in the backfield with Kepler. Twins to the right side. A little bit of a bobbled snap, but they're going to give the ball inside. And I don't think he's going to get there. Not much room that time. <laughs> Harold gets met early and spun down. Going to be fourth down for the Golden Bears. A couple yards shy of it. This will be a punt. Uran's had a pretty decent night putting a foot into it. But Maumee should have good field position right here. And I wonder if they want to come after it. They're lining up, it looks like. They've got nine, now seven on the line and two back deep to receive. Only a couple of linebackers back there just in case of the fake. Not quite sure how that didn't get called as a mommy player jumped. Not a good punt. Hopefully we get the roll this time. Nice. You know, in the first half he had that booming punt that bounced backwards 10 yards. That was, that looked like me trying to overhit a, a tee shot on a par five. That's what I would have looked like putting the ball. <laughs> but got a nice roll, nice bounce. 
So you look at it, it was a 10, 20, 30, 40, a 43 yard punt with no return. Well, that and plays. And that's what the turf does to you. Mommy has the field turf here, just like the Golden Bears do. And those bounces can go either way. And it went Mommy's way in the first half and it went Brian's way here. He had a 45 yard punt that bounced back 10 yards in the first half. This time he had a 25 yard punt that went 20 yards in the right way. Malucci screen pass set up. Well read by Brian. Nice move by Wolf to break a tackle. Inside Brian territory, still fighting down inside the 30 to the 27 yard line. And I wonder if Mommy may have not got away with the hold there. I say that a lot, but if you look right here, now that was clean. That was pretty clean. The way he reacted though, after that, the, the disengagement yeah. there, the way the Mommy player uh, Dotson reacted, I thought he was good. Malucci on a quick play afterwards, quick snap that time, after slowing down the whole time. Now they're trying to throw a little change of pace and coming at you quick. That's what you want to do. Teams get tendencies, and what they want to do is go against their tendencies right now. When you take your time, take your time, take your time, teams get complacent, and you want to take advantage of that. A nice little quick snap, and now we've got a timeout. Timeout, Golden Bears. This is a good timeout by yep. Coach Redhead. Very good timeout. Absolutely. You just gave up a big play down the sideline. You gave up some yardage on the quick snap. We got to talk about a couple of things right now, and this is an excellent time to do so. And again, with your guys going both ways, one of your, your star players went down with the cramp. It's a really good time to let everybody have a breath, get a little bit of water, slow things down, and let's talk about it. And that gives us a, a chance to take a look at our out-of-town scoreboard. Bath and Van Wert, 35-35 at the half. Defiance leading Wapak 16-6 in the fourth quarter. Bellevue 20, Wasion 3, Tenora over Otsego 20 to 13, Patrick Henry all over Wayne Trace 34 to 12, Delta finally flexed a little bit on Fairview 24 to 8 now, Edgerton 39, Hilltop 6, OG 21, Kenton 20, Elida Shawnee 9-7, Shawnee, Liberty Center 41, Napoleon 6, it's going to be an 0-2 start for the Wildcats, Hicksville 20, Swanton 6, and Montpelier and Woodmore finally scored a touchdown, nine nothing. Montpelier and Antwerp over Eden now, 40 to 24. Archibald 23, St. Henry nothing. Nine nothing sounds like a bad baseball <laughs> score. Snap comes back, Lucci rolls to his right, looks to roll back to his left, throws it out of bounds. That, um, that did not make the line of scrimmage, nor, and that nor, and he yeah, wasn't out of the pocket. The box. There it is. They there just it is, called finally. it. Finally. <laughs> <laughs> Coach Redhead's like, what took you so long? <laughs> Here he is. He's not. He's not out of the tackle box. And he up. And he didn't throw a pass. He didn't pass. That's so two. Two offenses. And that's the, and that's a huge penalty because it would have been fourth and one. Yep, it's a loss of down. And so you're going to back them all the way up. Is it a loss of down? It used, it used to be a loss of down. Well, but even at third and 14, yeah, it would have been, but. if he would have got it to the line of scrimmage, it would have been fourth and one. Yeah. Big penalty right there. They're keeping, they're going back further. So it's third down and almost a zip code. <laughs> Ball on the 35 yard line. comes the snap a little bit low Malucci back to pass little tunnel screen in the middle gets it to Wolf Wolf breaks one tackle not another and he's going to be drugged down it's going to make it fourth and 11. And now we got a face mask penalty that came in late. Oh. Let's take a look at this on the welling construction replay. Yep Sam got his hand up there. He did. Well that'll that'll get him on first give down and 15. Two big penalties back yep. to back in what's been a very clean ball game yep. up to this point. If it's from the spot of the foul, it should result in a first down. But if it's from the original spot, it'll be second and two. And then, nope, they're gonna mark it off inside the 15 to the 13 yard line where it's going to be first down 10 to go for the Panthers a minute 34 to go here in the third quarter on your main stop scoreboard Brian leading on me 28 to 14. Coach Redhead is not a happy camper right now you can see him on the sideline gesturing and not happy they had him 
they had him in a big time stop and couldn't get it done. Hands off this time, it's gonna be Wolf, gets over the right side, finds a crease, drives, spins, touchdown, Mommy. So there's a penalty that gave you a touchdown right there. It is. You don't face mask that, and there's a touchdown. That would have been, yeah, it would have been fourth and 10. Wolf just finds the crease, nice seal block. Good effort by Kepler to try to bring him down just too strong, and now we got a one score game. Wolf, after scoring the touchdown, on to kick. The snap, the hold, the kick, up and good. And that's going to bring us to 28 21, a minute 10 to go here in the third corner from Casmeyer Stadium on the Golden Bear Sports Network. Ryan Parks and Recreation Department would like to wish the Ryan Golden Bears good luck in tonight's game. The Ryan Parks and Rec offers a wide variety of classes for you during the entire year and an array of sporting events all year long. Check out what the Ryan Parks and Recreations Department has going on at brianparksandrec.com or like them on Facebook. The Ryan Parks and Rec hopes to see you in one of the many parks that Brian has to offer and enjoy the facilities. Questions about the classes or rental of one of their facilities, call 633-6030. Welcome back here. Good time as we're waiting for this kickoff to once again thank our sponsors. Main Stops of Northwest Ohio is sponsor our scoreboard. Welling Construction. We've gotten the replays working this week. We've seen a few Welling Construction replays. Stockman Lawn Service for our Red Zone. WBNO, WQCT, Andres O'Neill and Love. Brian Athletic Boosters, Brian Parks and Recreation, the Danielle Van Atta Agency, Fackler Monument, Jason Deach Automotive Services, newcomer Schaefer Spangler and Brettinger, Northwest State Community College, Obel and Turnbull Funeral Home and Crematory, Starks Plumbing and Heating, Veteran Services of Williams County, and the Williams County Fair. You know, I think I just realized potentially what Coach Redhead was trying to tell the official, and that is he didn't think it was a 15-yard face mask. He thought it was incidental. The five, an incidental one, yeah. Looking to see who's back for Brian. Kick is out of the end zone again. It was Hahn and Schellenberger. Yep. Drew Hahn did a great job returning kicks last year for the Golden Bears. Uh, he, you know, he's a guy that you want to get involved in your special teams on the offensive side, and uh, they haven't given him any chance to return tonight. No chance to return tonight, and yeah, I don't think he's been targeted in the passing game tonight either. He was a couple times last week. This time is going to be slot left. Slots both ways. One man in the backfield with Kepler. It's going to be Sam Harold. Here comes the snap. Read option. Gives it to him around the right hand side. He's got a crease out over the 30. Tripped up once again. An ankle tackle. Sam Harold usually doesn't get down with those ankle tackles, but that time. 55. No, it wasn't. No, he just basically ran into Carter Brown. He ran into Carter happened. Brown. Ran into his own player. And there's a penalty. Are they calling Brown for something on the like the block? Looking hold. Well, that'll bounce him back. That'll be inside the 10. 20. 22. Oh, okay. If you're on the positive it's side the of the ball, side, yep. it's from the spot. If you're behind forgot, the play, about it's the, the new, new rules. rules. Yeah. So first down and eight. Kepler back to pass, looking, pulls it down, going to run up the middle. Ducks his shoulder, drives forward after about the 28. Going to make it second and one. Wolf came down and made that tackle. Did a nice job on that. Be about a yard and a half short of the first down. Line to gains the 30. But only second down since we got the down over on the first, uh, on the holding penalty. Hahn going in motion. Gives it to Harold over the right hand side. Again, spinning, moving players with him. Still on his feet. Still on his feet over midfield down to about the 42 yard line. That was just determination running. And Absolutely. now we're getting to the place now after a big play. I'm looking for laundry. Absolutely. 
He just pushed the guy off. He pushed off of the guy and spun. Big play right there. Oh my Probably going to lead us this. down to the fourth quarter. Don't think we're going to run a play. But that was just, that was just, that was anger running from a foolish absolutely. penalty is what that yeah, was. Absolutely. And that brings us to the end of three here from Kassmeyer Stadium in Maumee, Ohio, where your Brian Golden Bears lead Maumee 28-21. You're on the Golden Bear Sports Network. Discover affordable transfer opportunities at Northwest State. Start here and save thousands on tuition. Our advising team will help you get your credits transferred. So don't wait another minute. Get started today. Every day thousands of kids start vaping. So if you want to talk to your kids, you got to get it trending. Uh, I was just... Trying to get your attention. Could I just asked me? Visit talkaboutvaping.org for tips on when and how to have the vape talk. Here at the Williams County Veteran Service Office, our mission is plain and simple. We are here to serve our local Williams County veterans and their dependents. We are staffed with trained service officers who have the compassion and understanding to assist their fellow veterans in obtaining all federal and state benefits that they have earned. Additionally, we provide emergency financial assistance and transportation to VA medical centers. So if you're a veteran or a dependent of a veteran, stop in today and see how we can help you at the Williams County Veterans Service Office. First down, Golden Bears. Ball at the 43 as we start the fourth quarter. 28-21 is what our main stop scoreboard reads. Hahn in motion, puts trips to the wide side of the field. One to the short side. Once again, Sam up the middle, breaks a couple tackles, slips to a third, can't get out of the fourth. Not sure if that was, was that Murphy on the tackle or 56? 56 was your tackler. So that'd be Jack Lake. Another one of those inside linebackers from on me. And we're able to catch that on the Welling Construction replay. It's hard to see at full speed. Second down, pulls it. Kepler up the middle again, another ankle tackle. Chase is able to fall forward for a first down. <laughs> the number of ankle tackles tonight has just been wild. It really has. But a first down moving the clock and now it's Brian using a little bit of mommy's game against them. No hurry. Wolf up the middle, nowhere to go. That one was well sniffed out by the Maumee defense. Yeah, they figured that one out. They sent two guys blitz up the middle. And that's one thing Coach said when he was looking at Maumee is they're sending blitzes every play. And that was just one where you got caught up in the middle of the blitz. Second down 10. They gave him no gain on the play. Clock running inside 11 minutes. And that's going to be a penalty. Offsides, cheap five yards. The second time we've seen the hard count tonight. Absolutely, and that time, number 45, um, Liam Kennedy was in the middle of the Bryan line. He was close to the backfield. So that just basically makes it a, a first and five for them. You know, they had that first and five, they got five yards on That's first right, down. exactly. Basically makes Wolf a, a run for five, puts us in the progression. You want to stay in this progression. Stepping up, banning up on the receivers. The snap, going to be Harold around the left, crashed in, gets through two, inside the 20, 15, pushed out of bounds at about the 10 yard line. We are going to be first and goal for the Golden Bears. And you saw Maumee launch two guys at him, and you're not going to bring Sam Harold down by launching your body at him. You're going to bring him down by wrapping him up, and that's not what they did right there, and that's when you saw the big game going in to the Stockman Lawn Service red zone. So first down, it is going to be 10 to go. Just outside the 10. Wolf breaks to another tackle. He's going to scamper in. Touchdown, Golden Bears. Flag on the play. I think that one may come back. It was thrown in the end zone. That's Comes good. in the neighborhood of holding. Let's look on the Welling construction replay to see if we see it. It is going to be a hold. Think they're going to get it? Yep. So it's going to be first down and 10. Ball's going to be out to about the 12. Going to be a first and 12 from the 12 probably after they move it back. But we are in the Stockman Lawn Service red zone for lawn care, snow removal, fertilizer, and spraying. Call Stockman Lawn Service at 419-636-6500.
7-2. Big penalty. Again, another big the, penalty. The, the face mask penalty put a touchdown on the board from Ami. Let's hope that this holding penalty doesn't take one off the board for the Golden Bears. Kepler rolling to his right. Both backs in front of him. Little dump pass. Gets to Harold. Harold going to be pushed out of bounds inside the one. Yep. That may be enough for a first down. He tried to get it out there. He tried to get it over the pylon, but he just uh, he had to protect the ball. They were coming in to try to strip it out. You can see right there the, the lead or the back blocker, number five, um, Bonds Crawford was coming in trying to strip it out. Ball's going to be inside the one, first down, goal to go. So four plays here to get a touchdown. And we're gonna, 25 in between each play. And Brian's going to take their second time out of the night with 9.58 to go in the ball game. Brian leading 28-21, first and goal inside the one-yard line. We'll take a short time out with them. You're on the Golden Bear Sports Network. To the Brian Golden Bear fans, those who made donations to the cause, to the school board and administration, and everyone who played a role in this project, we just want to say <laughs> thank you. Phase two of the capital improvement project includes field upgrades at Rec Park, a new softball field, and revitalization of soccer fields on the former Washington school property, and renewal of practice fields on the BCS campus. Let's finish the project and build champions. Go Bears! Brian Bell! So Chris, after seeing all the Brian athletes on our, our spot there, why don't you tell them about the upcoming schedule here on BrianSports.com? Well, you know, we get right back to it tomorrow as the Lady Bears are hosting Springfield in soccer. We're going to have that one for you from the turf. First time the Lady Bears on the turf, 2 p.m on Saturday and then right back on the turf on Tuesday as the boys will host uh, Continental Soccer. Nice to have the turf that he can take that. Yep. Fumble oh. snap, Kepler picks it up, scrambles to his right, tosses into the corner of the end zone, touchdown Golden Bears. Wow, that was making something. And there comes a flag and late. I, th I think that was probably a celebration. He stood there and posed after it, watch this. He stood in post. Illegal man down oh, field. Oh, wow. That was a late flag. Coach Redhead's out on the numbers. He is. <laughs> so on this drive, that's two touchdowns taken off the board by yep. penalties. Wow. That was not really late. Su not surprising on a play like that that was broken, that your lineman gets a little bit downfield. But that just makes it first and goal on the six. Let's see if we can see that here. Blocking for the run. Yeah, right there. Well, Sam Harrell's not a, a lineman, so I don't know. You had your a guy in the back. You had your guard that was down on the S. Okay. So, but keeps the ball. First down. Goal to go from the six. Kepler hands it to Harold. Stops, puts his foot in the ground, gets to the five, balls on the ground, fumbled. Panthers say they have it. They're going to say the Bears. It looks like it. it's Brian Ball. He's holding up two fingers, so it's going to be second down. Ooh, that was scary. That was scary. Bears need to get a score here. i tell you what I'm doing on this play, though, is I'm trying to run the ball to the right and put it in the middle of the field because mm -hmm. then if I don't score, I'm at least lined up for a chip shot field goal. This is going to be second down and goal. From the six? From the six. Clock has stopped 921 as Coach Redhead was talking to the line judge. Rolling the clock. Ball ready for play. 920. On the main stop scoreboard, Brian leading 21, 28, 21. Nowhere to go up the middle once again for the Golden Bears. Just Kepler with one yard. Kepler pulled it, brought it back out. Listen to this mommy crowd. This is, this is a different situation in mommy that I've seen the two years we've seen this team. This is the one thing we're trying to not let happen is a crowd get in the game and they're yep. getting into it. 
Third down, go to go, ball on the five, 8.40 to go in the ball game. Brian leading 28-21. Kepler back to pass, throws a slant, caught Hahn, touchdown Golden Bears. Don't see any flags there. Drew Hahn, his first target of the night, results in a Golden Bear touchdown to make it 34-14 with the, or 34-21 with the PAT coming. One, one would have thought that after our, our talk in the beginning of this drive, that maybe we were in the coach's headset because yeah. we called Hahn the beginning of this one that he hadn't been targeted all night the first one's he's, a big one he's done a good job blocking for downfield and playing that position where you're kind of the decoy and yes. that time they target him and that's again tendency 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 find the guy that hasn't been targeted well and with Maddox out cramping he's yep. playing that position he yep. moves into that slot roll kick is up kick is good big drive big answer two scores wiped off with with penalties to punch it in finally, 35-21, eight and a half to go here from Kazmaier Stadium in Maumee on the Golden Bears Sports Network. Why do so many people travel to Jason East Automotive Services in Edgerton when they want their vehicles repaired? Because Dave Brown and Sam Bailey have over 60 years of experience fixing the problems that other mechanics couldn't. They work on all makes and models, and they specialize on imports. Recently, they have expanded their service area by almost 50%, and they've hired Eston Knurk to their staff. So if you have a vehicle, foreign or domestic, that you want fixed right the first time, take it to Jason Deets Automotive Services on the east side of Edgerton. Welcome back. Big response by the Golden Bears. They punch it in twice. Both of them get called back on a penalty after giving up a touchdown with a bad penalty that would have got them off the field. They needed that response. They got that response. That's the sign of a mature team. Yep. That's a mature team. Th this isn't that that blowout easy game on the schedule that they've been expecting over the last couple years. Mommy's putting on a fight and they're not done yet. Brian had to respond with maturity and they did just that. Took the ball down the field, even with some adversity on two penalties, able to get it in the end zone to pump that lead to two scores. And this is key right now with special teams. They need to tackle, need to pin them deep. Duran's got a teed up right on the X on the 40 yard line. The run up, the boot, low line drive kick. Gonna be taken at the 10. Out over the 20, 25, breaks to the outside. Nice tackle on the sideline. Again, Uran made the tackle, I believe. Take a look here on the Welling construction replay. Might have been Schellenberger that made the tackle. That's what they're saying here in the stadium. 10, 20, there he skips out. Yeah, it's gonna be Schellenberger. An ankle tackle of our own. Much needed. The good field position for Mami at the 35. Eight and a half. We'll see now if they begin to, to spin things up. They, they're down two scores, eight and a half to go. The way these teams run the ball, that may only be two possessions. Yep. Once again, Malucci fakes the pass, pulls it down, takes off by himself, out over the 40, runs into his own man, gets drugged down. Again, quarterback on quarterback violence, brought down by Kepler at the 44 going to be second down one to go Liam Murphy came in big on a big time block at the end you see him blocking right there and he pushed Carter Brown out of the way which really allowed him to get that extra couple of yards second down one to go ball on the 44 clock moving inside eight minutes little shovel pass to Williams Williams trying to get around the right side isn't able to turn the corner taken down by I think that was uh is that Schellenberger again might have been if Maddox Langenderfer back in. Trying to look. I saw a two on the back side. It might have been 22. And I believe we're going to have a timeout called here by Mom Me. Why don't we keep it here, give a little bit of recap of where we're at. First half was the, the Kepler show. Um, again, three touchdowns. Spread the ball around a little bit this half. Um, first passing touchdown. You got Wolf scampering in on a touchdown. A little bit more of a balanced attack from Brian in this second half to stretch this lead to 35-21. And hats off to this Golden Bear defense after giving up touchdowns on the first two drives. Other than the penalty yep. that let Mommy keep the drive alive on their last possession, the Golden Bear defense has been just solid all this second half. 
Malucci back. Quarterback draw runs up the middle. Is going to get enough for the first down. Wolf gets him and drags him down, but not before he gets out to a mommy first down at the 47. And he hurdled his own man who had a Brian Blocker pancake on the field five years ago. That had been a penalty. Would have been a penalty. I remember Austin Schimler in a playoff game at Napoleon late in the game did that and got a touchdown whistled back. Malucci back to pass this time, airing it out deep, has a man in the slot just off his fingertips. That was Will Kubitz, number 81, that was targeted. That play the first time, same guy, same direction, was a touchdown. It was a touchdown. And that one was just, just a fraction. Yep. It stops the clock. I like the call on first down. I do too. To chuck it down the field. Now you got that in the back of the mind of the defense. You got them going, well, we can throw it downfield. That's right. And as a defensive back, I can't just backpedal. I've got to turn my hips. Yes. Twins to the left, one to the right. Handoff is going to be to Wolf coming this way. Inside Brian territory at the 50, brought down. Going to be enough for, I believe, another first down. He's got it by about a yard and a half. First down, Mami. They got a player down on the sideline here. I think there's a player down. Trainer's yep. going out, Trainer's so it looks out, like yep. there is someone down. And again, it looks like another cramp, and she's got his foot up in the air, pushing down on the toes. That game tomorrow we're doing for the girls, that is going to be against Springfield. It's going to be at 2 o'clock. We'll have that for you on the Golden Bear Sports Network from the turf at Golden Bear Stadium. It's going to be Mark Hagens and Connor Hagens on that one for you. And uh, excited to have those two join our broadcast. You know, I got a kid that plays soccer, but I can't call soccer. So we're going to leave it to the pros. Mark Hagens and his team will uh, do a great job. That's an awesome thing. It's uh, My son played four years at Defiance as a goalie. I coached at the Defiance High School in Defiance Co College, coached goalies. Love the game, but it's a tough one to call. It is. One guy to the near side, two to the far side. Malucci back to pass again, launches it up. This time well read. Good defense there by Schellenberger. Schellenberger read the play and actually ran the receiver's route for him that time. And interestingly enough, on the far side of the field, there was a mismatch, two guys on one there. And uh, if he had gone to that side, there could have been a big play. But again, I like the home run ball call on first down. Second down, 10 to go. Just under seven minutes left in this one. Brian leading Mami, 35-21. Looks like the cramp may have been Wolf. I don't haven't seen him out here since then. Malucci pump fakes, takes off over the left-hand side. Big stiff arm, but pushed out of bounds. And Sam wanted a face mask there because he got some incidental contact on his face. You can see this as you come through. I'm not sure that was very right That was... Yeah, that so was a Jim Brown-esque yeah, stiff arm. He's like, uh, where's that one? <laughs> you can stiff arm, but I don't think you can face me. Exactly. And a huge thank you to our sponsors, Welling Construction, for sponsoring all of our replays here tonight on the Golden Bear Sports Network. Third down, eight to go. Malucci, short slant pass, dropped. Will Kubitz had it, dropped it. That was a big drop. Oh, absolutely. That and was that a big drop. Fourth, down. fourth and eight. I mean, you got to go for it here. Yeah, you, you got to go. And this is a ball game play right here. Yep. Absolutely. Fourth down, eight to go. Now, if you remember, Brian last week in this situation um, threw a skinny post deep. That was the one that was caught and then stripped. So Kubitz is now on the, lot, the the other side. Let's see if they go to him again. He's going to roll out, rolling to the far side, looking, looking, looking. No place to go. Just throws a jump ball up, and it's caught. We got to hit those to the ground. Tipped and caught. That Tipped. needs to go to the ground. It does. You can't tip that one up in the air. That's Kubitz. the second time that's happened tonight. Yep, the touchdown was on that play. Kubitz made up for the drop as he caught that one. Big play. Malucci's going to roll, puts his foot in the turf, cuts back inside. 
Touchdown, Mami. Oh, that is a big one right there. That's a heartbreaker. You see him rolling to the right, just puts that right foot in the ground and cuts up field and nobody could get to him. They teach you in the jump ball, if you're not gonna make the interception, bat it down. And that went straight down. up in the air and Kubik's able to pick it up. Yep, that, that's one where you want your, your defensive backs to take lessons from your volleyball team. Yep. A switch now, it, it was Wolf that's hurt because well, I'm not sure how he stuck that one through. Their backup kicker is their punter and also their quarterback, Chase Malucci, knuckleballed that one through to make it 35-28. My prediction is spot on, but we'll see if we're done. 35-28, Brian on the main stop scoreboard here on the Golden Bears Sports Network. Rooting on the Golden Bears is a tradition that brings us all together. Just like the sports we love, another tradition has stood the test of time. Oberlin Turnbull Funeral Home and Crematory. Since 1922, we've been part of the community, supporting you in the moments of celebration and loss. Just like a team, we understand the value of traditions and the love that binds us together. So whether it's cheering for a win or celebrating a life well lived, remember we are here for you. Oberlin Turnbull Funeral Home and Crematory. Family owned, family focused. Welcome back to Casmeyer Stadium. We got us a ball game, folks. 35-28, six minutes, 30 seconds left to go in this one. Brian to be receiving the kickoff. Watch the onside kick. Wolf trying to jog out his cramps on the, the sideline over here. I'm ah. telling you, not that I'm calling it, but you got to be really careful right here. Well, it, here's what I'm watching is they changed tees. He jogged out on the field with one tee, and he tossed it back and got another one. I think so, this ball's getting, getting about 10 yards. From the look of, of the way the ball is, it, this is going to be an onside. Brian's ready for it. Everybody up. I think he's going to drive it. Nope, he drives it deep. And this one into the end zone, through the end zone, another touchback. Wow, that was, I mean, it looked like he was going to, like he was gearing he up. Had the ball kind of did. tilted off to one side. I thought he was going to try to put a, a, a big one hopper into the ground um, or maybe a pooch like Van Wert did last yeah. week in recovery. I mean, remember in the era of Hollow, everybody's got everybody's film. Yes. You know what I mean? And so you can see exactly what worked and didn't work. Now, the alternative is you also have a chance to work on those during the week to fix the mistakes you made over the weekend. But boy, oh boy. Big drive here. Sammy goes over the left side. He's got room out over the 30. 35, 40, knocked out of bounds at about the 41. This is where Sam Harold becomes a beast because yep. you're tired yep. and he can just drive that ball forward. And every time you look after a big run like that, you're looking on the field for laundry. There's been a lot of it tonight. Been a lot of it on very opportune moments. Trips to the right, one man out left for the Golden Bears. One man in the backfield with Kepler. Kepler puts it in his gut, straight up the middle, nowhere to go. That was Wolf that time, spelling Sam for a bit. I know they're reluctant to put the ball in the air, but a little bubble screen to Drew Hahn. I think there's a mismatch there with Drew Hahn and who's covering him. When they go trips, they don't have, they're not playing man right now. Yep, they're there. playing the playing the zone. They're rolling a linebacker over and trying to play a safety over top. But yeah, Wolf's in on this play as well. They are going to put it in the air. It is the bubble screen, but to Brown, breaks the tackle out over the 50-yard line. Going to be enough for a Golden Bear first down. Big play right there. Nice play by Carter Brown. Well, that's, that time, everybody everybody went on to Han. He got double teamed there, which is why Carter Brown got that one. I'm not entirely sure Carter Brown was the first the first uh, goal there, but when the defense crashed on uh, on uh, on Drew Han there, Carter Brown came up big. Once again, Wolf in the backfield with Kepler. Two receivers each way. 
Puts it in his belly, pulls it out, takes off up the middle, has got a seam. Kepler inside the 40, 35, pushed out of bounds at the 32-yard line, enough for another Golden Bear first down. Nice tackle there by Keyshawn Midcalf to push him out of bounds. Looking at this on the Welling construction replay. Just kind of shoulder my bounds. He had some more green grass in front of him. Now they go back to the twins in the backfield. No, they're going to run Jog Wolf off. This Harold's back in. Two each way for the Golden Bears. And taking time off the clock. Five on the play clock as they get to the line. Here comes the snap. It's going to be to Harold up the middle. Inside the 25, to the 20, to the 15, down to the 12. No laundry on the field. Another first down, Golden Bears. I was looking for that, though, because the, the Maumee player indicated like he was being held. I didn't see it I didn't there. see it. He tried to spit out of a block, but that's th th this is a big statement drive for Brian. They've taken the ball straight down the field, and now they've got the clock in their favor. A one-score lead. Make Mommy use some of their timeouts. And I like that we're sticking to the game plan, switching it up, not just running every time. Ooh, ball on the ground. Kepler snap. picks it up. He's going to scamper in inside the five. Touchdown, Golden Bears. Out of a broken play. That's the ball bounced on happened. the snap. Picks it up. Scrambles 10 5. Powers his way into the end zone. Another rushing touchdown for Jace Kepler. I feel like one of the earlier rushing touchdowns started up on a drop snap. I think so. Well, unfortunately, we're not going to get your score. My prediction's not going to be right, but Which you know what? I'm happy about that. If there's a W in the scorebook, <laughs> I'm not concerned. Ooh. Kick. Oh! <laughs> skims off the goalpost and skims over. Ooh. Kane's going to hear about that one. He the is. Team. He He's is. A player on the Brian soccer team as well. Dual sport athlete. That, that, that wasn't a great free kick there. That <laughs> one wasn't. That one just scraped the, uh, the crossbar and went in. But that was a big score. Big score. Four and a half to go in this one from Kazmaier Stadium. On your main stop scoreboard, Brian 42, Mommy 28 on the Golden Bear Sports Network. Discover tremendous scholarship opportunities at Northwest State. Over the past two years, we have awarded nearly $2 million in foundation scholarships. That's free money for college. Don't miss out. Apply today. Welcome back here to Kassmeyer Stadium. Big, th that was a statement drive by it Brian. Was, absolutely. After you give up the big play that was aided by a tip ball. Big boot down the field, taken at the 15. Going to be out over the 20, 25. Looking for a crease. Net spins away from a tackle at the 30, goes backwards, and it gets back out to the 30-yard line. Looks like it's a little bit slow to get up, but... I think that was number eight. Keyshawn Midcap. I think that was eight. Keyshawn, Keyshawn Midcap. Midcap broke out of a tackle and then he got swarmed upon. But you know what I like about Keyshawn Midcap returning those balls is he comes up. He, he doesn't wait for the ball to get to him. He takes off at a pace, figures out where the ball is going to be, catches it in stride, and then goes off. And and he does the one thing you've got to do on, on kick returns. He goes north-south. Yep. That time he spun out of the tackle but he starts out going north-south. Malucci back to pass, out in the flat, caught. Breaking out of one tackle. Is he gonna break out of a second? He does, but he gets pushed out of bounds. Nice pass that time. Carson nice Grace. catch by Carson Grates back in after his cramp issues. Bears playing just a little bit soft. They don't know if Mommy's gonna go run or pass. So they're kind of hedging their bets in that time just a good first down uh, pass but that was a big play he, yep. got, he got out of bounds and got the first down to stop the clock if yep. we get to kept them inbound short of the first down keeps the clock rolling Malucci back to pass again lines up airs it out deep downfield incomplete nice defense that time once again back there on the coverage 
for the Golden Bears. That was, was that 22 or 28? That was 22. Okay. That was Schellenberger. And the player for Maumee is down, and Jace Kepler goes over immediately. Good sportsmanship there to help him hold up. It is. I think that's Will Kubitz is down. He's been their deep, deep threat guy all day. Dropped the one in the flat and then caught the tip out there on the last drive. So cramping, you know, usually it's more in the hot, hot weather. It's not super hot tonight, but if you don't hydrate during the week, it, it, it it's comes exactly, back to bite you. It's exactly. You know, the, the hydration starts literally Monday. for next week's game. Yep. Hydration for these guys starts tonight. Yep. How do you start putting fluids back in your body? How do you keep your electrolytes up? And it's tough to do. Um, and especially for these kids, it gets tough when they get back into school yep. because you got to be in class. Yep. You know, you, the teacher's only going to listen to so many excuses that, hey, teach, I need to fill my water bottle. Yep. Second down, 10 to go. And again, they're taking the shots on first yep, down. They are. Second down, 10 to go, 4-12 to go in this one. 42-28, Golden Bears lead. Bellucci rolling to his right, flips it out over the head of his receiver. That's Tristan Dotson he was trying to get to. You he, can see there on the Welling construction if you replay. Look on the construction replay, you, he had to get the ball over Jesse. Yeah. And trying to get it over him was a little bit too high for his receiver. You know, I, I think that after the first two, that, hear me out here, it's third and 10. I wonder if you don't try a run right here because you've got the Bears thinking pass, pass. It's third and ten. You know, maybe you get a, catch him sleeping. It, it's four down territory, so I think, and there it is, design quarterback draw. Well read by the Golden Bears, but he breaks the tackle inside the 40, inside the 35. We had two guys there. We spied on him. We knew it was coming. But we let their line get through to our second level of defense. And so our guys were met with blocks. Big first down run right there. Back to pass, throwing it deep again, going the same side. This one, t almost another tip and catch. Oh, oh my goodness. I can't, my, my cardiologist is gonna hear about this. <laughs> Definitely. That was just, oh, that was, no. Don't do that to me. I get you're the defensive back and you want to make a big play, but you got to knock those out of the way. But 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 think about this for a minute. This is the second freshman we've got out here on a big drive. Yep, yep exactly. We've got two freshmen playing, and when they brought him in, they, they brought Weber in, and immediately they went after him. They're going after him again. Pass is dropped. Boy, some drops, key drops for Mommy here in these key moments of the game. That's about the third key drop right there. It is. Two on the last drive. So if you look at the right side of the Bryan defense right now, we've got two freshmen out there. You've got Jacob Duran playing defensive end. Um, you've got the nickel package in. you got Anthony Weber Anthony in Weber's the yep. one who's defending those plays on the right-hand side. They're going after him. And you got Carter Dominic on the slot receiver but they're not targeting the slot, they're targeting the wide. Again, looking, going over the middle, this time caught by Wolf. Gets out of one tackle, out of another, gonna dive down inside the five. First and goal, Mommy. And you know it's coming, you know it's coming, and you just having trouble defending it. You got three guys around, and they're all playing kind of zone defense. Malucci's going to take off over the right-hand side. Skips, tries to get in. I think he, I think he stopped. He stopped. He stopped. That's a big stop. And not necessarily a big stop because of the touchdown. That's a big stop because he keeps the clock rolling. Yep. Right now, the big numbers on the scoreboard are Brian's best friend. Yep. Trying to line up, hurry up. Ball on the ground. Malucci picks it up again, dives it. Doesn't get in again. No, this time did. they want to give it to him. Yep. Mommy's going to go for two here, I believe. I don't, nope, they brought the tee out. They're going to line it up for okay. one. I thought but, they put a two out. But, but I think they're going to have to try the onside this time. Yep. Wolf recovered from his cramps back in to try this extra point. Snap, kick, up, good. Wow, that just made it interesting. With 3-11 to go in the ball game, your Golden Bears, 42. 
The Wally Panthers 35 on the Golden Bear Sports Network. Let's play together. Bryan, Ohio will have a new inclusive playground on the site of the former Lincoln Elementary School. An inclusive playground is a place for children and families of all physical, mental, and social abilities to learn, play, and grow together. We are currently raising funds with the goal of starting construction this fall. The Lincoln Park Inclusive Playground Project is an initiative of Bryan Parks and Recreation using a project fund at the Bryan Area Foundation. To learn more or make a donation, visit bryanareafoundation.org. Let's take a look at the main stop scoreboard. Main stops of Northwest Ohio, open when you need them. You're always near a main stop, don't forget. Thursday, Thursday, every Thursday. 42, 35, Brian leading Lamy. 311 to go in this one. Gotta say, Chris, I'm smelling on sides here. I am too. Now the Bears do have a returner back. But you better believe that everybody up there... But they've moved it. Yep. He's kicked off from the hash every kickoff. Yep. This time he puts it in the middle, taking the short run. The ball's going to come to the bench side. Gets the hop. Harder Dominic. Dominic. <laughs> nice job. There. Nice job. On you there, but. Nope, it was perfect. A nice aggressive play not letting the, the ball short hop. Again, he did what we've seen the mommy returners do. He attacked the kick. And remember, you only have to let it go 10 yards if the offense recovers it. The Bears can recover it anywhere. So we start on the positive side of the field after a big drive, but we just gave up a big drive. You need a couple or three first down, stay in bounds, yep. and be able to work the clock. Harold's trying to get out over the left-hand side. Again, tripped up by the ankles. He had plenty of green in front of him. And I bet if we look out there, 56. That would be Jake Jack Lake. Second down, five to go. Clock rolling under three minutes. It'll be under two and a half when they snap this. Bryant in no hurry. Still 20 seconds to go on the play clock. My guess is they snap it somewhere around five. Four minute offense is what we're in now. Five on the play clock, there's the snap. Up the middle, it's gonna be Wolf, enough for a first down. Big run right there. Now the clock will stop on the first down. But That's only until the ball's yep. marked ready for play. They're rolling it down. Yep. And Mommy has two timeouts, and I think they might use one, and yes, they do. And that's it, they are going to use one of their timeouts. Why don't we use this timeout to catch our folks up on scores from around the area and around the NWOAL. Defiance beats Wapakoneta 16 to 13. Van Wert decided to flex. 57-35 now over Bath. Antwerp 48-24 is the last update we've got. The Montpelier Woodmore game still 9-0. Bellevue beats Wasion 26-3. Delta holds on to beat Fairview 31-28. Liberty Center beats Napoleon 47-6. PH defeats Wayne Trace 34-12. Edgerton 46, Hilltop 12. Hicksville beats Swanton 28-6. And Archibald shuts out St. Henry 29-0. Those are your scores from around the area. Here, the main stop scoreboard is 42 to 35, but the big numbers. And, and, and we were talking all through the first half about how fast things were moving. Now we're going to be the last game to get done. Yep. <laughs> first down, 10 to go, Brian. Up the middle is going to be Harold. Going to break inside to 30. Another Brian first down. Keep chewing up that yardage, keep chewing up that clock. Nothing fancy, just and give it to Harold again, and let him go. They'll wait till the ball gets ready to play. Run the clock down. They've got 30 seconds. They can run it under two minutes unless Mommy takes their last time out. Ball is sitting right now at the 26-yard 26 26 line. 26-yard line, first down, 10 to go. 
one more first down and this ball game's over. That's all we need is one more first down. Maumee can only stop the clock one more time as we are going to be at 145 when this one snapped. Kepler puts it in the hands of Wolf. He's brought down immediately. And that's going to be it. That's going to be the final timeout. 42-35. No timeouts left for Maumee. They burnt their last one. Now all we need to do is get a nice couple of runs. Yep. A first down would be perfect because that would ice the ball game. Yep. That would ice the ball game. And again, while we're here, let's take a look because we'll get a chance to recap all this on our post-game show. Again, let's give one more shout out to our sponsors, the Williams County Fair, Veteran Services of Williams County, Stark Plumbing and Heating, Herbal and Turnbull Funeral Home and Crematory, Northwest State Community College, Newcomer Schaefer, Spangler and Brenninger, Jason Deach Automotive Services, Spackler Monument, Danielle Van Atta Agency, Brian Parks and Recreation, the Brian Athletics Boosters, Andre O'Neill and Love. We've had a great night with the Welling Construction replays. We've seen a lot of those video replays sponsored by Welling Construction. Third generation family owned general contractor specializing in priding themselves in building quality custom homes, major renovation projects and commercial work. Your vision, our expertise. Contact us at 419-636-3712. Kepler keeps the ball, goes around the left hand side and he's gonna ice this ball game with another Brian first down. Big play right there, once again. Made the read option, made the perfect read, snuck around the outside. So th the clock will stop. Fascinating. They started the play clock before they started the game clock. So Brian can only take it under a minute, but there's no timeouts left. We can go victory formation here and go home. And that's what they are gonna do. They put a protector back. Ball in the red zone. Red zone sponsored by Stockman Lawn Service for lawn care, snow removal, fertilizer, and spraying. Call Stockman Lawn Service, 419-636-6572. think they are going to, are they going to snap it? They are going to snap it, and Kepler's going to lose yardage off his offensive total by taking three <laughs> snaps at three yards back. He's going to lose nine yards before, or six yards before yep, this. He doesn't have to, he only has to take one more. One more, snap it down, run it down to about 10 seconds, take a knee, and that's going to be it. We don't have to snap it again. Hard fought. Yep. Big win. Nice game for the Golden Bears as they get their first one on the season to even their record at one and one. That was a good one. That, that was, was a good really one. good one, Chris. We had a good ball game here tonight. Hopefully, next week we're going to have another same type of of ball game. So before we take our last break, let's give a shout out again to our sponsors, Andre Sunil and Love, Brian Athletic Boosters, Brian Parks and Rec, Daniel Van Atta Agency, Fackler Monument, Jason Deach Automotive Services, Newcomer Schaefer, Spangler and Brenninger, Northwest State Community College, Obel and Turnbull Funeral Home and Crematory, Starks Plumbing and Heating, Veteran Services of Williams County, and the Williams County Fair. With the handshake, we'll be right back to wrap things up and get you all ready for tomorrow and next week here on the Golden Bear Sports Network. Discover tremendous scholarship opportunities at Northwest State. Over the past two years, we have awarded nearly $2 million in foundation scholarships. That's free money for college. Don't miss out. Apply today. STEM is everywhere. Like here, behind the scenes of The Walking Dead. STEM can create new worlds on and off the screen. The only limit is your imagination. Get inspired at SheCanSTEM.com. Here at the Williams County Veterans Service Office, our mission is plain and simple. We are here to serve our local Williams County veterans and their dependents. We are staffed with trained service officers who have the compassion and understanding to assist their fellow veterans in obtaining all federal and state benefits that they have earned. Additionally, we provide emergency financial assistance and transportation to VA medical centers. So if you're a veteran or a dependent of a veteran, stop in today and see how we can help you at the Williams County Veterans Service Office. Welcome back to Mommy. Final here tonight, Brian 42, Mommy 35. Good ball game. Great ball game. And again, a shout out to all of our sponsors. Pre-game sponsors, Obel and Turnbull. 
The keys to the game, sponsored by the Carlin Company, are a lineup sponsored by Yoder Mechanical and Custom Fabrications. The National Anthem, sponsored by Veteran Services of Williams County. The kickoff, both have, sponsored by Brian Ford Lincoln. And our game officials tonight, sponsored by the Tri-State Vision Center. Woo! That was Woo. a fun one. That was a fun one. Um, I liked the tenacity of Brian. We saw them shoot themselves in the foot last yep, week. we did. We saw them shoot themselves in the foot tonight. The problem was last week we didn't respond. Tonight we responded. We did. We absolutely did. And it was in all the phases of the game. You know, the offense was clicking. The defense got stops when they needed to. We didn't let adversity give us a problem when we had the penalties that pulled back touchdowns twice. Twice. And, you know, and then the special teams much improved. Much improved. They were the problem last week. Four plays. You said that multiple times. But special teams uh, was was key tonight too. Was, was solid tonight. They, they they played solid. The the thing is, we don't have a kicker out there like Wolf from on me. Yep. We're not going to be blasting forty five yard field goals and kicking the ball out of the end zone on every kickoff. We don't have to win the special teams battles. We just can't lose them. Yep. And tonight we held our own. Um, and I think that was a huge key to this ball game. The other key to this ball game, quite honestly, was this was the Jace Kepler show. Yep. Um, especially in the first half, again, you know, the first three touchdowns were all Kepler runs. We were six touchdowns into the season, and every one had been a run by Kepler. Had over 115 yards at halftime. My guess, he was probably up somewhere close to 200. Late in the game, they leaned on the, the shoulders of Sam Harold on defense and on offense. And big stops on defense for Sam. Huge runs down the stretch to be able to, to stretch this one out, wrap it up, and, and get out of here with a win. A big win going into Fairview next week. Yep, that puts them at one and one on the season. You know, Van Wert is Van Wert. You like to beat them, but it's been seven in a row. Mommy was a game that two years now you've beat them pretty good, but they had all the momentum coming into this game with their breaking their loss streak and everything like that. The big crowd. And it was just good that, that the Bears got in here and got a win. It was. It, it, this was a tough place to play. I, there, there's not a lot of places that we go where the crowd is going to be this yep. loud and this hostile. Yep. And, and this was a really loud crowd tonight. And every time Brian seemed to take them out of the, the, the game, Mommy would do something to bring their fans back into the game. So that, that's a big one. It's going to be a, a happy bus ride back to Brian tonight. Absolutely. Absolutely. All right, let's take our final timeout, shall we? I think we should. Then we can start breaking down, get folks ready for tomorrow, and we'll tell them a little bit about next week. You are listening and watching the Golden Bear Sports Network. We'll be right back after this break. The Bryan Parks and Recreation Department would like to wish the Bryan Golden Bears good luck in tonight's game. The Bryan Parks and Rec offers a wide variety of classes for you during the entire year and an array of sporting events all year long. Check out what the Bryan Parks and Recreation Department has going on at brianparksandrec.com or like them on Facebook. The Bryan Parks and Rec hopes to see you in one of the many parks that Bryan has to offer and enjoy the facilities. Questions about the classes or rental of one of their facilities, call 633-6030. Discover affordable transfer opportunities at Northwest State. Start here and save thousands on tuition. Our advising team will help you get your credits transferred. So don't wait another minute. Get started today. Nobody likes an awkward silence. You can actually use it for something good. You haven't really been yourself lately. Are you okay? Find out how you can help a friend with their mental health at SeizeTheAwkward.org. So i got to be honest, Chris, my, my life before the Golden Bear Sports Network was for a lot of years going all over Williams County, doing games everywhere. But the one season that I had a team for the entire season, they were 0-10. After last week, I was a little nervous. <laughs> I'm really glad that Coach Redhead pulled this one out yeah. because I didn't want to be the one that everyone's looking at and going, Bropson, it's your fault, buddy. <laughs> we, are, we are not doing well, and it's because you're in the booth. But th this was a big win tonight. It gets the monkey off the back. It yep. gets the guys winning. Gets them ready to go on the road next week to, to Fairview. Again, a very young team. Um, a team that's that's not quite ready for the big time yet. Um, and so hopefully it's a chance for us to be able to go in, run our offense, work on things, and come out of there 2-1 and one as we enter the NWOEL season. Yeah, absolutely. You know, Fairview uh, struggled against Delta tonight. Um, Bears... 
able to get a victory here with Mommy, a hard-fought victory. And I think that the adversity they felt a little bit tonight is going to serve them well because that game, again, I always I hate to throw the records out the window, but when you got a rivalry game, even though it's been a little one-sided lately, these are still kids that are nearby. You know them, and they would like nothing better than to beat Brian it, next week. It, it's it. I mean, when you – Rivalry games, especially in this part of the country, mean a lot. I yep. mean, if, if you walk into the locker room at Napoleon or at Defiance, the minute the game's over for the River Rock rivalry, the clock starts ticking, yep. counting down to the next year's game. And that's a non-conference game. It's a rivalry game, which is what Brian and Fairview are in all sports. Next year, next week, we will be at Fairview. Chris and I will be back with you to bring you the Golden Bears as they travel to take on the Apaches. It's going to be a good one. Hopefully, it's, the weather's not going to be quite like tonight, but it's going to be the first time this year that the Golden Bears are playing on grass. Yep, absolutely. And, you know, that, that becomes a, a, a difference. There's going to be fewer and fewer games that Brian plays on grass in the years going forward. Final thoughts and wrap-up. Anything from you, boss? I think it was a great game. The Golden Bears did what they needed to do tonight to win, to get out of here with a win against a good Mommy team. I see this as positive momentum. You got Mommy, you got Fairview, you got Delta. I'd like to see us 3-1 and one after week four. It'd be really nice to be 3-1 and one after week, and week four. And, and, and honestly, I think barring disasters, I think we should be 3-1 and yep. one after week four. And that'll be good as we get into – because we've got a couple or three weeks there in a row that are going to be really yep. rough sledding. Yep. That Liberty um, Center, Patrick Henry back-to-back -back is tough. That's a tough yep, two days. That, that's a, that'd be a tough two games if you were bowling green. Yep, exactly. um, that's just a, that's a tough one. So my final thoughts here, great night. We said Brian needed to control the clock. We said Brian needed to run the ball. They did both. They made the passes um, work when they needed to. It was just a really good game, and the defense got off the field when they had to. Yep. Um, take away two tipped passes, and this is, again, we said it last week after the Van Wert loss, that it wasn't as close, it was closer than it was on the scoreboard. This one wasn't quite as close as it was yep. on the scoreboard. Take away those two tipped passes, yep. but you know, you can't take them away. That's the way it was. 42-35, yep. Brian wins here. So a few final thoughts and a wrap up here. Krista Bruner, our director tonight, thank you. I know we had a little bit of chaos at the beginning. Krista makes it all happen, pulls it all together. Our cameraman, John Tripodi and Tristan, Tristan Atkinson, the Mommy Athletics, Cam Kucher, the WQCT board op, Rick Armentrout, the WOS, WOSN, Nick Fraley, Golden Bear Photography, Matt Neff and Stephanie Ponzak, the executive producer of GBSN, my partner tonight, Chris Malanga. Watch tonight's broadcast again on BrianSports.com or WOSN on Saturday at 4. WOSN is found on Spectrum Channel 19 or over the air Channel 26.1. Chris and I will be together next Friday night as we travel to Fairview to face the Apaches. This broadcast is produced by the Golden Bears Sports Network for the private use of our audience. Any duplication or other use of this broadcast, including descriptions or accounts of the game, without express written consent of the Bryan City School District, is prohibited. And don't forget, tomorrow, the Lady Bears hosting soccer. Lady Bears is going to be hosting Springfield. We'll have that on 2 o'clock on the GBSN. On the GBSN. So tune in tomorrow to watch Golden Bear Lady Bear soccer. One final time for all of us at the Gold, Golden Bear Sports Network. With Chris Malang, I'm Dave Brobston. Again, your final score tonight for Mommy, the Brian Golden Bears 42, Mommy 35. Have a great night. If you're traveling home, drive safe, everybody. We'll see you tomorrow.